All right. So we're just going to finish up these statistics, and then I think that's pretty much it for this kind of framework-y part of the refactor. Uh, and then we're actually going to start working on new code, which is going to be fancy and uh, syncing with the network. So we're going to report the amount of coverage we have. We can actually get that pretty easily. It should be in um, should be in session dot coverage dot len, and this will print the length of the coverage database. And then I also want to record the um, uh, fuzz cases per second. Uh, I love that number. It's one of the most important numbers to me for fuzzing. Uh, we'll do this. 12.2 should be sufficient. So we'll do stats.fuzz cases as F64 divided by um, time RDTSC minus, uh, oops, time elapsed um, session start. Something in that ballpark. So we're going to have to add a start to the fuzz session. So we're going to add start here. Start U64, and this is the time uh, uh, TSC timestamp when the session was created. And then that's going to complain. It's just going to tell us exactly where to put it. And then we'll just put this down here. So we'll do start and CPU already TSC. So this should now have the fuzz cases per second as a total average, not a running average. See what we got. Okay, that looks pretty good. So we have the, we've got one VM exit. We've got one thing of coverage because we're only trying to execute one thing and failing. So we have like no coverage, technically. Um, and we've got a uh, number of cases number of fuzz cases per second. Uh, that looks pretty clean, to be honest. I think that's pretty good. So, I don't think there's much we can improve on there. Um, doo -doo -doo. Okay. So, yeah, I think that's pretty solid. This should run on hardware as well. And it does. Looks great. We're getting 1.7 million fuzz cases a second on hardware. That's uh, that's single core, so it's not really fair. So what we should be able to do is set that RIP. Um, now we can kind of permanently set the RIP to what we want it to be. We're going to use this for this case. Uh, that's where we took our snapshot. Now, I think this is kind of borked, but that's okay. Because uh, now we're at the point that I do like this API. Um, and we should be able to run this. And yeah, we're getting a page fault. Ooh, we're getting a page fault when trying to execute that. Uh oh. Uh oh. E20. Okay, so. Hmm. Oh, yeah. Um, wow. I completely forgot to implement this. Um,. This right here, we're hitting this for sure. Whoop. Let's just make sure we are hitting that, but we definitely are. So right now we're not actually grabbing that page from the network. We are, it's just never getting mapped in. Yeah, we're hitting whoop, okay. So here, if there is a mapping, then we return out the mapping. Otherwise, if there's not a mapping, then we will look that up in the table. And that will be from, um, so at this stage, we can go into the master's master or into network mem. So we'll say if let sum master is equal to self.master, then we'll return um, master to got get page virtual address. Otherwise, we will go into otherwise if let sum net mem is equal to self.network memory, I think is what I called it. Otherwise, none. So this is, um, nobody can provide the memory for us. It's not present. So there we'll try and get it from the current master, 
This will get it from the master's master, and this will get it from the network memory on the master, which we now have to figure out what the name of that is. So where we have master here, network mem. So net mem, for that, we have a net backing, and we will translate that. We'll get offset is equal to net mem vert to offset. We're going to translate the virtual address. Uh, if we can't get that entry, here we'll do dot get. If we can't get that entry, then we won't have an offset. We'll get the offset here. And now I need the page. I need the raw page of this. Um, well, I don't have a great way to translate that. I mean, I... <laughs> Uh, so this is basically the logic. Do, 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 do. Read the net backing. Get the offsets. Then we're going to copy from up here. Touch that. We translate. And we dirty it. So we want close to this, but not exactly. Okay, touch the mapping to make sure that it is downloaded and mapped. Then we're going to look up the physical address of the mapping, and we'll do that through translate. We won't pass that dirty. Oh, translate dirty. That one we want, and then this one will just be translate. Doesn't need this argument passed. We kind of changed that up earlier, and that just leaves one. Okay, so then this one, we will do a translate of that and then we'll flatten that to get the page and then we'll return that page which is guaranteed to be present at that stage um and then we'll wrap that in a sum and 430 this is not net backing we'll just say netmem netmem here as well Okay, so we've got some borrow issues. We'll just ref both of these. And I think that should be it. Beautiful. So this should work now. Let's give it a shot. Okay, now we're hitting syscall 25. And we're hitting a lot of coverage. Okay. Sweet! So now we can support kind of arbitrary nesting. Um... Which should just work. So we could technically fork a VM from this VM and build on top of it, which is uh, really neat. Okay. All right, so we have this coverage information and it's getting recorded, so we are saving on the coverage, which makes sense. But now we need to report this to a server. Uh, so to do this, we're gonna take a look at we're gonna to wanna to save the network address, I think, that we create here. And I think each worker, hmm. We're gonna do this the easy way first, and then we'll improve it. So we're gonna start off by, um, and let's see what my perf is. My perf's okay there, here. That's, I think that's okay. I don't know if my translations are, are costing me a lot there. So we're hitting syscall 25, and that's something... We have no idea how we're getting there, but it's anti-query information thread. Um, I don't think I'm actually causing that. Maybe it's, like, crashing or getting in a weird state. So we got to figure out why it's uh, behaving differently. So to do that, we're going to get coverage out of this. So... Um, I guess uh, coverage um, or insert. So I think coverage, currently I don't store anything along with coverage. I think I will probably parse the module offset for coverage. Right now I'm not too worried about it yet. Um, am I? I am. So we're going to pass that RIP up to the server. And to do that, we want to put coverage in a on session. 
So on first session, we're going to do um, pub fn report coverage. And this is going to take a reference to self. Oops, we're gonna put this in a better spot. We'll put it right here. Um, this is report uh, coverage. And this will take an RIP currently, which is a U64, and that's it. Uh, and then a string. Um, hmm. Hmm. Yeah, I think I'll have this take a... Uh, I don't know, maybe I'm just gonna have a module offset. So I can do a struct, um, struct coverage record. This will have a module, which is an option of a string. And then an offset. Uh, I guess U64, oh, U64, actually I64, ah, uh, U64. Um, is that how I want to do a coverage record though? Can that be converted into an own thing? And I don't know if it can. I might have to implement that. But I think I can get this information relatively cheaply. I'll need to parse out the module offset information from the target, but that's not too difficult. I've done that a lot. Um, yeah, we can AREF that string. Do this. This is valid code. This is fine. All right, so we'll go down to... Um, We'll go down to report coverage, which I think is at the very end of the file. It is. This is going to take a coverage record. And this should be our repr or derive clone copy. And. Maybe we'll just cow that string. I think that's what I'm eventually going to do. But whatever. We'll just say. Um, when we report coverage or insert here, I will do a self.coverage entry or insert um, if let sum, if let sum, yeah, I guess I don't care about the result. I'll say if coverage or insert, Use the coverage record as the key. The hash that we're going to use is the coverage record offset. And the closure will just be box new for a zero size type. And then I'll say, if that inserted, then this is new coverage. So this is um, coverage was new, was new. Okay, so then we can change all this stuff. And this will return a bool of whether the coverage was new or not. Um, true, else, false. Which means up here, I can say if session.report coverage, coverage record. Um, uh, if coverage record module none because currently we don't know and then offset is just going to be equal to rip in this case it'll be self vm guest regs dot rip okay so we're going to try and report that coverage information and if we reported new coverage then we'll say single step is equal to a thousand so that'll report new coverage in those events and this should now work as it did before, as long as I have commas here instead of semis. Okay, um, CR.offset. 
Expected use size found U64. Okay, so this... Um... That's just uh, an issue with this. Oh, that is the... Um, that's the hash. The high quality hash. Alright. And then that... Expected a U64. And this is us at 782. Oops. Um, that's true. This is going to be a covered record now. Covered record A. 782. Uh, equality not implemented for this. So we'll give partial EQ and EQ. So we can now compare those records. And that should... Just got to make that pub. Wow, and that has two owned implemented for it. I'm actually really impressed. Oh, because that string will live long enough. Okay. So this should still work. This will be identical to what we had before. Nice. And now what I'm going to do is if there was new coverage, then I'm on a... Uh, I'm on a worker. Uh, fuzz session. I'm on a fuzz session. So on this fuzz session, I'm going to have a um, a UDP socket to the server. And I think this is just an arc UDP. So this is a um, open connection to the server. And I think I need to get the address. So let's take a look at how I do that. Kernel source net, net mapping. UDP. I need a UD, this is the UDP bind. And then I'm going to have a server adder. And this is going to be a UDP address. And this is the address to use when communicating with the server. Do I need that? I don't think I do. Mm, I do need that. Okay, so this is the logic here. And missing server, missing UDP address. This is at 738. So here we will um, get a network device, bind to random ports, and then resolve that. And we're going to have the um, server will be... Uh, this server address. This will be equal to UDP. And this will be um, server address. This is server address. Okay, and we don't have a bunch of those things. Oh, we call it server adder. I'm actually okay with that. Now we just got to pull in a couple of these things. Net device, UDP bind, a lot of these unresolved. Um, I think that's everything. 757, expected arc found UDP bind. I think that's fine. I think it's just a UDP bind. I think that has the arc inside of it. Um, can't use the question mark on that uh, at 739. Expect uh, failed to get network device, and then this will be expect uh, failed to bind to UDP for network. Uh, okay, so now we have access to a server here, so we can do server dot. Um, netdev or self.server.netdev I think I can get a net device off of a UDP I'm pretty sure it's probably not that kernel source net net UDP bind and I can get the device so here we'll say device dot allocate packet uh, report it to the server so we'll do a loop here 
and we'll allocate a packet. We will then write into that packet, so we'll do um, kernel source net. Net mapping. I forget how I do my protocol. Here I'll do a let me packet is equal to uh, this packet. Packet.create UDP directed at the server address. So we create a UDP packet that is directed at the server address. And then we'll do a server message uh, coverage. And we'll do cow borrowed. Hey, Julix, how are you doing? We're going to do borrowed of. We don't know yet. Serialize mute packets unwrap. So that's going to send that. And then here we'll just do um, uh, self.server.device.send packet and make sure that flushes. So we want to flush that packet out right away. And then we don't have server message, we don't have cow. So we're going to grab cow from use alloc um, borrowed. Borrow cow, I think. Ah, that's pretty good. 810, we don't have a server message. And we get server message from use, use uh, shared, what do we call it? Folk TP. So I'll pull in Folk TP and server message. Um, server message. Okay, so now that server message doesn't exist, of course. So we're going to do, we're actually going to move the coverage record into here. We're going to noodle this. And we'll give it serialize and deserialize. Might as well implement debug. Don't have to, but we will. And that should implement serialize and deserialize. We're going to have issues because string doesn't have that supported. We're going to have to do this on a copy on write, aster. And then I think we're good. Doesn't implement copy, but that's no big deal. OK, coverage record not found in the scope. I, wow, we put that in so many spots already. Um, so we'll have a coverage record that we get from this. Beautiful, 811. OK, so now we can go into here. And we'll just do a report coverage, coverage record A. So this is a report new coverage. Uh, to the server. Um, yeah, and we'll call it report coverage. Then we'll do a report coverage. Car cow borrowed on uh, the coverage record, and we'll just ref that. And then this doesn't need a ref. Okay, I think we're getting close. Um, and then we'll just break out of the loop, but technically we will loop because we'll wait for an act from the server borrowed. Oh. No, I think it's fine here. I think we can literally just have a coverage record A, which is what I had typed out before. And then here I don't need the borrowed. I can just say coverage record. Because I think as long as that has serialize on it, it doesn't matter. Oh, that fits on one line, too. Oh. Coverage record 268, expected ref. Yep, we'll return a reference to those. And 811. Um, I guess I want to cow that whole thing, don't I? I think I have to. Borrowed. And 
And then I guess I'll put that up there and we'll see what we can get working here. Serialize. Aha. Uh -huh. Got to pull in create noodle serialize. Use noodle. Oops. Use noodle serialize. Okay. Uh, and then we just have some borrow problems. That's fine. We just put this in a new scope. And I think that takes care of it. Nice. So that's going to send a message to the server. So the server should probably crash here. Yep, failed to deserialize server message. Fantastic. So now we can actually see this might just work now. Unhandled packet report coverage. Holy shit. God damn, we did that in a clean way. Wow, we did that in a clean way. Um, and can I do borrow it on that? I don't think so. Expected ref. Okay. So you have a reference to a coverage record. And that may or may not be borrowed on the inside. Wow. Christ, I'm trying to write some Rust code and, be, uh, and really beating my head against the borrow semantics when it comes to closures. What kind of, uh, what kind of closures are you up to? Is there anything I can help with potentially? Any, uh, any questions that you have a concrete question about? Okay, so unhandled packet coverage record. And there's really no issue with that. I think what I wanna do is, I think a coverage record, I'm also going to include with this. So this is the record. And then this is the, um, then we're gonna report the session, right? We call it a session, right? A fuzz session? Yeah, so this is gonna be a unique identifier for the fuzz session. Love it. 61. No rules expected. Oh, thank God. We just had that wrong. I was about to say I should be able to serialize that. And then 813. This is going to be a record. And we'll have a dot serialize. And a session, and this will be session.id. This is the session identifier, and that field doesn't exist, but we'll uh, we'll make it self.id. Um, 814. Okay. Oh, well, we don't have... I guess I don't have a unique session ID. Yeah, fuck it. We don't, we don't need this shit. We don't need it. We don't need it. Should I that out? Okay, that's back where we were. We're gonna report this coverage, and then here, I'm gonna have a database. Um, this is single-threaded, okay. So we'll do... Um, and this is uh, let mute coverage is equal to a hash map of a coverage record. It's a hash set of coverage records. B tree set new. And this is uh, coverage records. Okay, and then down here, what I can do is on a server message with a coverage, uh, report coverage, I will have a record, and I can say that uh, coverage dot insert record, right? It's like close to that. It's not exactly um, useful TP coverage record, and. Oh, we don't have hash implement on that. That's fine. We'll just change this into a B tree set 
call it a day, and then put this to uh, partial ord and ord. Now we can use that in a B tree set. And we'll pull that in from here. Okay, um, 48. This is uh, into owned. So we're gonna take ownership of that, and that should work. So what I should be able to do now is I can, if this, then I can print um, new coverage at x record dot offset. Um, uh, hmm. See if I can ref that. I think it's already refed. Yeah, so into owned is moving it. Is there a way in a B tree map to I guess I can do entry or insert? Entry. Oh, first entry. Huh. Entry, okay, um, for in-place manipulation, and then vacant and occupied, or insert. Um, and modify, or default, okay. I really like the idea of rust closures, but it isn't. But isn't it a bit heavyweight to call into the JVM for every temporary function? Oh, I didn't see the kappa there. I was debated. I was debated at the start of that message, real fucking hard. Holy shit! Yeah. <laughs> um. Uh, I wanted a, a few small utility functions: remove row and remove column J. They're removing a row and column of a vector in a contained space. Um, can't figure out the mutability and borrowing. I've been slapping ampersand and mutant to random places for ages. Um, is there a reason to use VecVec instead of an algebra? Uh, this is a PR to the Rust compiler. Not going to pull in a crate for that. So remove row and remove column. And then removing a row or column from that. Um, working on that issue. Oh, what is this issue? Huh, interesting. Okay. Um. All right, so. <sighs> so the problem is I want to convert that into own, but then I want the entry for it. It's on a B tree set. It returns bool when you insert, but I kind of want it to return the reference to the new thing. Replace, I don't want that. Remove, take, append, split off, drain filter. Can I even do entry on this? No, I can't. Ugh. Does that mean I have to clone this here? I think it's still moved. Yeah, it's still moved. Um, I guess that we have to do this then. If coverage contains record, if it doesn't contain the record, then insert it. Uh, we'll print some stats and then we'll insert it and then we'll continue. We'll do release build. Okay, and then ref that. Hey, okay, so this should spew all the coverage that we get. Yeah, so that is now reporting all the coverage up to the server. 
Now it's not retrying to send that coverage, so we potentially have, we're potentially losing things here. Uh, but we have all the different coverage events. Now we want to do module offsets, but we'll get to that shortly. That was pretty straightforward. Nothing too hard there. That actually, honestly, I was expecting that to be two hours of work, and it was under a half an hour. So, well, now I'm bored. All right, let's do it, right? So we're going to send this packet. Then we are going to wait for a response. So we'll do a um, uh, self.server dot receive timeout. So we're going to send the packet. So this is um, reports the coverage. Um, then we're going to uh, ba -ba 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 bow. Then we're going to wait for the acknowledge from the server. And this will just say receive timeout. Um, we'll wait 500 milliseconds. And then we'll get the UDP back here. And what do we do? This is a filter. Um, it gives the final ID and the size, which we parse out. So just a single question mark. Ah. So we'll say, if this is sum, then break. And then what we're going to do is we won't return anything until we get a... Um, that's pretty much it. Deserialize the message. Then, if match message, server message, uh, coverage, ack, um, do I want to send up like an ID with that? Yeah, because other, because two things can report coverage, so... Honestly, I might just have coverage act return it back. And this is um, acknowledge coverage was reported. So we'll do uh, report coverage act. Then I'll have the X. And then I'll say uh, everything else is none. In the case of in the case of getting the packet that we expect, we'll say if x is equal to this coverage record, then sum else none. Okay. Um, so check if we got an ack. Check if Ack is acknowledging the coverage we reported. Uh, Ack is Ack matches break out of the receive. Uh, and this is nope. And we have I don't know fifty millis. Fifty millis is fine here. If x is equal to that, we can do this. Whoops. Um, borrowed. So we're going to borrow that. And... Oh, do I just do borrow? Yeah, core borrow borrow. So that's going to get me a reference. And then 824 can't deserialize on. Oh, we got to pull in um, noodle. We'll just grab everything. It's always the, always the play. 
832, can't borrow, can't infer type for that. Oh, this is just x.0. I'm being silly. Wait a minute. I'm not being silly. That is a cow. I'm doing something stupid. CR, coverage record. Uh, can we just reborrow that like that? Yes, we can. All right, so this will now report and then it'll get stuck. Yes, because it's waiting for that ack forever until we send it an ack. So we're going to send an ack by um, send the acknowledge. Send the ack. So here we'll do report coverage ack. Um... Oh, we want to do this in all situations? Yeah, 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 yeah. In all situations, we're going to report the coverage. We're going to acknowledge it, and we'll do this by sending a record back. We just, we just send it right back. Send that right back around the corner. Uh, now we got some, now we got some issues. Moved into a record into owned. That is true. Well, now we can clone it. Okay. Hey, here we go. So this should work now. And that's acking those. And it's not stopping until we get an ack. Awesome. <sighs> Beautiful. Fucking beautiful. Okay, so now we have all the coverage information getting reported out. Um, we're not doing anything with inputs yet, but we will want that working. Um, oh, I, you fucking... Jeez. I don't want this stat print. I don't want this. I don't want the statistics. Right? Because I'm going to just do the statistics on the server side, not on the local machine. Can I confirm or deny? That should be true. should be pretty accurate. And then I want to send those up. All right, let's get this working. <laughs> then I can get rid of all this shit, this worker ID concept. Next stats. Work ID and next stats. This goes away. This just returns a self. All that effort we put into that code 140, um, fork, yep, just a single, or two args, okay, 769, the concept of a worker goes away, num workers goes away, atomic u64 no longer being used, um, 22, so six. Okay. Not using start. That is true. And I think what I'll do is I'll do a login. So that's what we'll do. Log in. This is a uh, log in as a new fuzz worker. Uh, log in 
ACK, and we'll send a U64. And this is, um, return, uh, return a new session identifier. Return a new session identifier from a log, uh, as a response to a log in request. Right? So I think that code's basically gonna look like this as we had before. So we're gonna log into the server. That'll give us like a... Mm, we don't need that. We have a unique port. Yeah, we don't need that. We don't need that. Um... So we're gonna have uh, let mute clients is equal to b tree map of a I don't know UDP address or something like that in Rust uh, received from I think it gives a UDP address socket address that'll do the trick pull in source net e socket address and then this will say if source uh if this yeah if clients contains source if it doesn't contain source source dot insert um, check if this is a new client unique IP port pair uh, unique source IP port pair in which case we will source insert this so we have btree map into a, a struct client and we don't know what we're gonna have in there yet so this will just be a sock adder, socket address, socket adder to a client. Um, B tree map new, and this is uh, clients. And then we'll have a, and we could spin up threads. There's a lot of ways that we can improve this uh, server code. This is mainly just to get things working. Code quality here doesn't matter too much because the perf is not going to be too insane yet. <laughs> um, coverage. B3 set coverage record. And this is, uh, and then we'll have last packet. This will be instant. It'll be the time of the last packet received from this client. And this is the, um, This is a set of coverage for this client. Okay, so the B tree set new. Then here we'll insert a new client. Yeah. Insert the uh, insert the client record if one does not exist, and then we'll do uh, clients dot entry source or insert and I don't want to do or insert because I think that is not lazy I want to do like or insert with yes or insert with a client which is uh, last Packet is instant now. And coverage is an empty set. B2 set new, instant now. And then dot last uh, and let mute client is equal to this. Uh, let client, right? Client. Last packet is instance now. Uh, 
That should work. Nope, we got some lifetime issues. Cover record A. B tree map. Get rid of the hash map. Why not? Okay. Oh, is there no entry for B tree maps? No, there is an entry. Um. Um. Oh, source might be a. Uh, Socket adder doesn't impl ord. Okay, then we have to use a hash map there. No problem. Oops. Hash map G. All right. Expected a closure. And then instant we'll get from center time instant. Beautiful. So now what we're going to do is when we get new coverage, uh, coverage reports, our reports coverage, then we will also do client coverage inserts. Uh, if not, client coverage contains record. Then we will insert record.clone into owned. So that will log that in the client's coverage. And then we will be able to print statistics. Hmm, maybe we do want to make this threaded. What's up, Maddie? How's it going? Um, yeah, I guess I want to report. Okay, um, yeah, how do I want to do this? If I put that as a, I could have clients as something that's mutex, then statistics. Yeah, let's grab the statistics here. False cases and VM exits. Ooh. Those are the view exit reasons. I think right now I only care about the fuzz cases. Oh, I don't want to structure this. I could use threads. I guess at a timeout, let's do, let's try this. Uh, static clients is a, mutex. I can't put a mutex in a static, can I? That's fine. Um, let clients is equal to a arc mutex. And then here we'll do arc new mutex new. Honestly, default, default, I think. I think all of those things implement default. So then clients will pull in use standard sync arc and mutex. And we'll do this dev over here. CD, uh, chocolate milk server, cargo run. Nice. 
So now we can have um, stats. This takes clients, which is one of these. Uh, loop. And then we can do uh, standard thread sleep duration from millis 1000. So sleep every second. And duration from time. Uh, okay, then in clients here, we'll do clients.lock.entry. And I think I need to keep that lock around. So we'll do let clients is equal to clients.lock. Dot on wrap, because it's a mutex. And make that mute. And then I think we're golden. OK, it doesn't need to be mutable here. Of course not. And then we'll spin up a thread. So we'll do um, standard thread spawn by move. And we will call stats with the clients. Clients is clients clone. So make a new arc for that. And then in that loop, we can print uh, let clients is clients.lock. Unwrap, print this clients. All right, that should work. Uh, we can't. OK, uh, for a client in, uh, for adder client in clients.iter, I'm going to print the address. Oops. Print one, two, three, four. Pretty print that. And we'll just do adder. And then we'll ignore the client for now. Yeah, we'll do coverage. This. Coverage.len. OK, 35. Oops. Client.coverage.len. OK, so then if I reset this, I should have a client connect in. And yeah, there it is. There's my client. And yeah, some of those things are not the clients I care about. Um, yeah, so how do I filter that down? But yeah, that's printing. And those numbers should be accurate. Um, and then I want the clients to check in on some interval, I think is what I want to do. Beckett AU, thanks for the thanks for the follow. Yeah, RGL, thanks for the follow. Hell yeah. Okay. So if I reset this. Two six six two, two six six four. So we're getting some new coverage. Why did I get new cover why would I get new coverage when I reset? Should never happen. Oh, maybe I just observed the coverage and I just missed it. But yeah, so that's that client. Um, yeah, maybe I'll send a login or something like that so I can only record statistics on ones that have logged in. Because otherwise, I'm recording it for every port that I've ever gotten traffic on. So I could do. Um, let client is equal to clients as mute. Yeah. And then here we can do client.map x 
last packet is equal to that. So if we have a client, then we'll do that. Otherwise, we won't do anything. And then get rid of this. Okay. Okay. Um, not found in there. Uh, get. Get mute. This is the source. Okay, uh, don't have anything for option, that's fine. So then we'll add a login packet here. So this will be a login and login axe. So this is a uh, login as a login. Hmm. Log in, and then we pass in a unique number. It'll be a session ID, I think. Log in as a new fuzzer process, or new, uh, new fuzzer. This is uh, acknowledge a login, and then we'll send the same U64 back. Okay, ballpark. Then down here, we're gonna grab this code and maybe we can simplify some of this stuff. Cause it's gonna be a little bit ugly. Well, we'll do, do this, uh, pub fn login and self. This is going to log in. And this will have the Okay, new packet, report, uh, uh, attempt to log into the server. And then what we're gonna have is on the session, we're gonna have a unique number that's gonna be our identifier. So this is gonna be our login and self.id. And that's our session identifier. So then we're gonna deserialize and then check if we got a login ACK. And um, same thing that we did here. So we're going to say if the ACK is equal to the self ID, then we found it. Otherwise, we didn't. OK, and we don't have an ID on. This is a VM exit filter. We'll just look where we define this. And this will be an ID. And this is a, a unique session identifier. Okay, 719. We're going to have a unique session identifier. And that's going to be a ton, uh, CPU RDTSC. You can't, you can't get much more unique than that. So then, this is um, log in with the uh, server and that's going to create a new worker so we're going to do self uh, session login so this is a uh, log into the uh, server with a new worker this is uh, create uh, fork the worker from the master okay so login with this server now we're gonna send a login packet and then we shouldn't handle that over here. Well, coverage 93, this will be on client. We'll say um, if let sum clients is clients, then report this for the clients. Uh, use here after move. Yeah, mutable reference on that. What? It's moved, oh, in the map. What? Isn't get mute, isn't that a mutable reference? Mutable reference to that. I don't know how maps work. How's that, that? that?
Um, map on an option. Hey, Supercuber, how are you doing? And then map. I didn't think map took it in. Oh, it does take a self. So it consumes self. Asmute map, yeah, I know that works. I'm trying to see if there's a better, a better thing. But if there's not, <laughs> filter, nope. Um. I mean, I guess I can do that. Oh yeah, but that's a, that's already a reference. So weird. If let some client, this client, client last packets is instant now. I'm so confused. Why does that need mute? I guess I can probably just do this with ref. Okay, that's fucking weird. What? What? I mean it. Okay. So I should panic. Unhandled packet login. Okay. So we're going to do, um, this is going to be the, uh, session ID U64. And, um, we'll do an impl a because you're borrowing the inner data of the option where you deconstruct and take a ref, but it's a option ref. I I mean yeah, I guess it's moving it's moving that reference into there. I get, it makes sense. I'm just not happy about it. <laughs> uh new <laughs> ID um e64 clients session ID is ID Last packet is instant now. Coverage is B tree set. Ah, fuck it. I'm just gonna implement clear for this. All right. Yeah, I think that's what we're gonna. Uh, session ID uh, self dot session ID. Uh, self dot last packet. No, we'll just remove the client. No, we're going to override it. Okay. All right, all right, all right, all right, all right, all right, all right. Server message, login, uh, client I, uh, session ID is this, and then we're going to blast this. When we get a, when we get a login, we're going to then say if client is none or clients unwrap ID is equal to is not equal to session ID this is uh, creates a new session and here we'll do oh and this will have workers uh, number of workers on this client this is the unique session ID for clients uh, used to track when a client reboots and comes back uh, with the same IP and port, but with a new session. 
Okay, so we're gonna say if the client is none or the ID is not equal to the session ID, then we'll create a new session, in which case we will do clients um, core pointer drop, core mem drop. Yeah, we'll try this. We'll just see what happens. Uh, clients.insert a new client uh, at the source. We got a new client. This has the ID of session ID, which is, I think, what I called that field, isn't it? Son of a bitch. Uh, workers is zero. Last packet is instant now. And coverage is a B tree set new. Okay, so we're gonna create a new session, and then um, session ID. If we don't have a client with this current address, or the session ID has changed, then we want to create a new client. And then client is equal to clients get mute source. And this is get the new client. That should work, right? And then I can do client dot workers plus equals one. Uh, increment the number of workers. Bitch. Okay, so uh, workers, this, this, then we'll have client workers. Okay, we have the address, we have the workers, we have their coverage. That's pretty good. So there should be one worker. 20, 40, 40, 60. Oh, shit. Oh, because it's retrying that frequently? Fuck. Um, I can make a client ID over here. I can pass in a client ID. Client ID is CPU RDTSC. Yeah, we got a core ID. We can use our core ID. Login as a new fuzzer and acknowledge a login from a specific core. So we're going to send a packet, and this is core ID. Might be a U size for core ID. Oh, it's a U32. Ooh. Core ID. So we have a unique identifier of our session, and then we have a core ID, 792. Um, core, if that, and uh, session ID is equal to session ID, and core is equal to core ID, then we found our packets. So that's done on that side. And then here, we'll have a core ID, and then workers is going to be a B tree set of U32, and this is the, um, Unique core IDs of the workers uh, on this session. Okay, and then this is workers.len. This will just do a three. And here, this will be a B tree set new. And here, we'll do uh, log the new worker client.workers insert core ID. 
And then we want to send the ack. So send an ack. This is a log and ack. Uh, let's first make sure this works with the with the retransmits going on here. Um. Ugh. On our app workers. Okay. So we got one worker. Noise. So I can now send the acknowledge for the session ID and the core ID. And we're going to acknowledge that that login occurred. And yeah. Okay, reset. Here we go. So we got a bunch of new coverage, and then it's printing this number of workers. And then if I reset, the coverage should drop back to zero because the client relogs in. Um, honestly, we're just not going to see that coverage message. Yeah. So that coverage resets because we create a new worker because we see that a new session happens. So we're going to say if there is no existing clients or the session ID has changed. Um, uh, create a new uh, client. Okay, so uh, new coverage at this. Not going to do that. So now, read that. Uh, read. I can get rid of this print. That's on verbose. Nice. This reset. Okay, so now we see that, and if we do another reset, yep, it drops down. You just, it just happens so fast you don't see it. But yeah, that's seeing a new session ID, which then causes us to reset the worker for that specific location. We just did a reset, so yep, that goes back down. Great, so if I change this to like, if I change this to like 50 millis, then we'll definitely see that drop. Reset. Yeah, there's the coverage increasing. Reset. Drops to zero. Quickly comes back. Okay, so this is now deleting old workers, and then we'll... Um, yeah, that's pretty good. It's pretty good. Reset. Huh, I'm pretty happy with this. Let's just do eight digits for a coverage. Burp. And now we have the coverage number for each worker and then the number of cores that have logged in and are working on that machine. Sweet. So then what I think I'm gonna do is I'm going to, what I want this to do is I want it to detect and kill workers. Maybe I'll just omit those. If, I could just say, I could say this. So that's printing right now. What I could do is, um, yeah, we'll do this. So, um, let's, for client in this, let's, uh, t time since last is equal to instant now minus client dot last packet. This is, uh, compute the duration of time since the last report. And then we'll have a field here. We'll say if TSL is greater than duration from seconds five, then um, question marks, else nothing. So this will hopefully So every time we get a new packet, we reset that so we won't see the question marks. But when, if I pause this, eventually it'll print the question marks. Yep, because it's like, I don't know where that server is. If I unpause it and we got new coverage, so the question marks go away. 
So now I need to add like a periodic check-in. And I think what I'll do is I might not record the statistics of the workers that are missing. So obviously it seems like it's gone offline and that's because it's not periodically checking in. Um, so I think what I'll do, um, maybe log, maybe I'll send a login message. Or maybe I'll just send like a check-in. So I want to check in the um, I want to check in with the server on some interval. Um. Oh, we'll get that from stats. Do I want the children to aggregate their stats into one? I think so. Okay. Um, let's see, what do I want to do? Statistics. And... So I have statistics sync into. And then that resets those statistics. And I want to like sync these to a server, I think. Trying to think what would be clean here. Um, hmm. God damn, how do I want to do this? I want to sync those statistics to the server, sync into on some interval. And that's on, that's on self sync. That's the local. And then we'll have a const remote sync interval. And this is the, ah, same to be honest. This is the uh, frequency to sync statistics into the server, uh, to the server. Okay, and then workers, who owns those statistics? Okay, we'll just some sort of snapshotted app. And then where we have login, your buddy will just take this code and we'll yoink it and then we'll paste it here. And this is, um, this is, uh, update statistics to the server. And this is, uh, report statistics. And then we'll send, uh, statistics. And we're really just sending fuzz cases right now. I kind of want to send everything, but that means I need VM exit. God, that would be so weird to have that in Folk TP. I could put it there. Good morning, Desu. How are you doing? Um, 
Like I can do this. I just I just would have to put VMEXIT in Polk TP, which is gross. Okay, we're gonna take a look at uh, Folk uh, shared. I have Folk TP open. Kernel source VTX VM exit. This. Guess we're gonna put it in Folk TP. It's fucking weird, but we're gonna put it in here. Wonder if you have troubles with sleep schedule. Not right now. Sleep schedule is okay right now. Ooh, exception. Shit, we're gonna move that. It's like basically anything that we end up using. Sending over. We'll have to put in here. It's kind of weird. It's kind of weird to put it there. But I don't think there's a better way. Fuck, and I don't have vert adder. I really don't want to pull in page tables as a dependency. Unless I want to re-summarize this information in a different way, which fine, I guess. I can do that. Okay, remote sync interval. And then uh, sync into and that's done there. Hmm. How am I going to figure out when I want to sync? Maybe I do want that worker ID. Do I want that worker ID? If I have a worker identifier, then I can... God damn. I think I need a worker ID here. Worker ID. Yeah, we're doing it. We're getting a worker ID. Uh, unique worker identifier. We already implemented this, but then I thought I didn't need it, but I totally did. Worker ID, not zero, worker ID, ah, U64, I think I said U size, yeah, U64, and worker ID is worker ID. cares and then we'll do use core sync atomic atomic u64 and ordering 775 775, okay. This is a worker ID. Let worker ID is equal to session workers dot fetch add one ordering 
sequentially consistent. Gets a new worker ID. Okay, 775. Now we just gotta add workers. Um, this is a uh, number of workers. 729. Ugh. Workers. Atomic. U64 New Zero. What if you have the server ping it instead? I have no way for the server to ping the uh, client. 125. ID. Okay. Get a new worker ID. So I have a worker ID. What's up, Sildoc? A silo docs? How's it going? Okay, so let's report statistics. And this is uh, fuzz cases. Uh, reports new statistics. Always a delta from the last report. It's important. Always a fucking delta. Report statistics. We don't need to wait for an act. We're not going to acknowledge this. If we lose stats, we lose stats. Not a big deal. Report statistics. I don't know. Do I want to act it? I might want to acknowledge that. I, yeah, I don't want to lose statistics here. I'm doing it relatively rarely. I'm reporting these stats relatively rarely. That I don't think it should be a big issue. Um, request ID U64. And then this is uh, report statistics ACK U64. And I should probably just make all this in, in a, like, where I have ACKs for all the messages. Shit, how am I going to do that? Um, Wait, we're re-implementing TCP? <laughs> yeah, that's basically the direction UDP goes almost instantaneously. Is you're almost always implementing TCP. I mean, eventually we'll just add TCP. It's not that hard. It's like a day. Probably less than a day of work to do TCP. Um... We'll just do this for now. Yeah, I don't have a way to undo if I miss, if I don't get my ack. Yeah, I have no way of undoing that. Okay, we're just gonna send statistics. Report statistics. Um, 
this is going to come from... Yeah, I could just report the totals and just overwrite it. If I just do totals and overwrite, I'm fine. I'm just always going to send... Uh, um, yeah. Always the totals. I already have that information. That's how it already exists. So we'll do self dot stats dot lock dot fuzz cases. Some shit like that. And then I don't even care if I drop them. Um, yeah, and we'll do that. Fuzz cases. Fuzz cases. Serialize that shit right out good. All right, so then this. Every millisecond it'll check in. Nice, and I was able to reset there. Oh, I don't call this ever. Um, sync stats. Sync into, and we'll say if self dot worker ID is zero, then whenever we do the sync, we're also gonna sync to the server. Session dot this. Um, report to the server. And then I could honestly do that on all the cores and I wouldn't need the worker ID anymore. It's not really that many packets. We'll just do this. I feel like eventually I'll need that worker ID so I might leave it in. But yeah, since we're just dropping those, if we miss, not a big deal. Uh, that's a lot of locking. This is going to have that stats lock for a while. I guess it's not too long. We'll just do this. I'm fine with this. So this should now panic. Failed to deserialize server message. Okay, now if I do this, I should still fail to deserialize, or fail to handle, but I should be able to parse it. Fuzz cases one. And then we'll have fuzz cases u64. Uh, number of fuzz cases performed on this client's. And this will be like first packets instance. Uh, time of the first packet received from this client. Okay. And on that one, we won't overwrite. First packet is this. Fuzz cases will be zero. Um, okay, and then we'll do server message, report statistics, fuzz cases. Um, clients dot unwrap fuzz cases is equal to fuzz cases. That's it. I don't have to act. Noise. Um, and how can I get that address a bit smaller? I just, I just want the address is unnamed as path name. Oh, that's Unix only. Um, this one, uh, dot IP noise. So I can just get the IP. Hell yeah. That'll be nice. Still gonna be a V4, I think. Okay, we got some problems. 110. Yeah. If let some clients is equal to client, client fuzz cases is fuzz cases. Uh, ref me. Eh, it probably doesn't matter in this case. 
All right, here we go. Now I have that V4 address. Um, and then this is fuzz cases. I'm probably gonna have to put this on a new window. Yeah. Okay. So then we will have the fuzz cases, client fuzz cases, and then the client fuzz cases as f64 divided by uh, let uptime is equal to instance now minus client first packets um, as seconds f64 uptime and then this will be uh, cases and then this will be 10.2 actually this needs to be like 14 and we'll have cases this uh, per second That's pretty close. All right, reset this. Nice. Uh, might need some more digits on there. We might definitely maybe need some more digits on this. And I feel like I want to put a space on the per second. I think that'll look better. Per second, and then we'll do 12. Dot two. That's better. Here we go. Reset. Okay. Um, so I should be able to reboot this server. And that server should come online, and it does. And so now I have two workers running. Mm, beautiful. So I want to format these. And you can't do this, right? You can't do that. If I remember correctly. Oh, you can! Uh, what's the longest? Four, uh, four times three plus three? Fifteen? 15. Okay, resets. Beautiful. Get this going, reset that machine. And now you have two servers online. And they're basically checking in. They're telling me what servers they're on. And I will want a collective number as well of the like total fuzz cases done. And I think the total I'll probably print at the end because I'll only sum up the cores that are responsive. So if a core hasn't, if something, if a server hasn't checked in for more than five seconds, uh, it will not be included in the stats. So let's see. Um, let uh, dead uh, unresponsive. Unresponsive is equal to this. Then we're going to say if it's unresponsive, then we're going to put those. So if I pause that VM, after five seconds, I, sh I sh should see some question marks that are like, huh, where's this at? And then, of course, the perf is dropping on there. And then I put, I unpause it, and it comes right back. Okay, so then what I want to do is I don't want to include the performance of that, not using f as the variable. <laughs> um, okay, then we'll have let mute total cases is equal to vec new. Oh, pfft. not vec new. What am I thinking? Oh, and stats. What the fuck do I have? Stats. Coverage. Coverage. Um, 
Kind of seems eye hurting to have IP over there. I agree with you. I'll, 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 I agree with that. I agree. There you go. Just for you. Just because you asked. Oh, total cases. Um. Fuzz cases. And then how do I compute fuzz cases per second? Oh, um, yeah, this will be uh coverage. And this will be an arc mutex B tree set coverage record. Oh, that's beautiful. Fucking art right there. Um default. You forgot uh, one of those things? I don't think I did. Oh, up here? Yeah, I totally did. Uh, coverage. Coverage. Uh, mess. Fuck. Unwrap. Yeah, we good. We good. We good. Dude, I feel like I misspell coverage every fucking time I could type it. I've typed it a few times in my life. Okay, I'm not using that. So now what I'm going to do is let me last f cases is equal to none. And then here, total cases is equal to 0 to 64. Total if response resp if responsive if not unresponsive then we're going to total cases plus equals client fuzz cases then um la uh, uh cases delta is equal to uh total cases eh Zero, it's fine. Uh, total cases minus last cases. Last cases is equal to total cases. Um, update last cases. And then here we'll say print total cases uh, 12 um, totals. Yeah, we'll have totals, we'll have cases. And then we'll have uh, 12.2 per second and 14, same format that we use above. And then we'll have cov, yeah, we'll just say cov instead of coverage, shorten these lines up a whiff. And here we'll have cases delta. And let coverage is equal to coverage dot lock unwrap len cases delta cases delta as f sixty four divided by this is going to be the um, const uh, print delay this is like stat stat delay print delay print delay print delay is a duration, duration from millis, 1,000, uh, time to, time, time to wait between prints, print delay. I don't know if that's static or if that's constantable. I don't know if durations are const. They should be, but I don't think they are. So we'll see print delay, print delay as seconds F64. And then coverage. Oh. Doesn't need to be mute. Yep, this one doesn't. Okay, we have this. Totals. We'll just say, um, I'll do a double, a double new, new line. 
Okay, reset this. And that fuzz kisses per second is on an impulse. Impulse? Why am I saying fucking on an impulse? What the fuck's that supposed to mean? It's, uh, um... Yeah, how do I format this better? Interval, yeah. You send new coverage over the network? I do. Okay, so then I should be able to reboot this machine. And now I have two workers. And the totals are the... Uh, the fuzz case per second is the actual totals between all those machines. And our coverage is totals. Insert X spaces before cases. I mean, the I, I want it to be, like, separate from the totals. The, like, summary. And I don't know a good way to do that, right? I could maybe do, like... This. Put some bookends on it. I don't know. It's going to be hard to figure out what this format should be. God damn it. All right, here we go. I'm not convinced. I'm not convinced yet. <laughs> Shit. <sighs> Dashes above, above the workers, or the, uh, like, dashes for this and then equals for that. Aggregates, lots of spaces. Yeah, I can do, like, totals. I'm borrowing your all caps idea. I could also do ANSI colors. And then let's just add some new lines up here. Let's just do a couple new lines. I think this is getting closer. Ah? Uh, ah? Uh? More dashes? Equals different characters? <laughs> These are hard problems. These are real hard problems. P equals NP, print equals what print? Make a full markdown style table. I think I just do ANSI colors. <laughs> NPR. I always fucking forget these. It's like X1B. Um, 24 bit. Whoa, I can't. I can't afford 24 bit. Oh my god, I always fucking forget what it is. Uh, let's see. Come on, come on. Give me the easy. There we go. That's exactly what I wanted. Bam. X, hex one B. Get rid of this shit. New line. And then it's just OM to escape it. Or finish. Finish him. Uh, don't I need, like, a semicolon in there somewhere? Maybe not. Alright, thoughts. Is it gonna be red, I think? I'm gonna make that, uh... So... 
Yeah, okay, so these ones are gonna be light blue, which is like 30, Oh, there we go. Uh, magenta, cyan, 36. Oh, that sounds wonderful. Put a little cyan in there. We'll finish it with that. And then the last one's gonna be like a, a jean, maybe? Maybe a jean? Maybe we'll put some jean in there. Maybe another new line on, on this biznatch. Oh, that's gonna look real good. Oh, this is gonna look so good. All right, here we go, here we go, here we go. Get a server coming in. Okay, it seems like that doesn't have a color at all. Um, I guess we want a blue then. We'll go 34, that's gonna be the deep ass blue. And deep ass blue might be a little bit more aggressive than what I want, but I, I don't want it to just have basically no color. Ooh, that's too, that's too aggressive. Ouch. Magenta? That's this color, right? God, that's, ah, that hurts. That hurts. That's better, but it still hurts. I want the light colors. Can't you do light with, um, oh, 16 color. Here we, oh, that's the semi. Okay, the bright, so you do the semi. Uh, so we'll do light blue, 34, one M. That's what I was wondering. I was like, where are my fucking semis? And then we can do a light green, a bright, a bright green with this. Oh, this is gonna look so good. You guys have no idea. Oh, look at that. Gorgeous. Um, all right, now we can bring this online and then we'll have two workers and then the combined stats. <laughs> Ship it. <laughs> the color scheme's not like perfect, but it's at least not a ass. Cyan look better. Well, to me, I can't see cyan. Cyan's just white to me, so I can't use just cyan. I could do like blue and then dark blue for the totals. Dark blue can be hard to read. What about magenta? Let's check out the magents. Cause that one wasn't too bad. Ooh, that's not very bright. What other colors do I got? Yellow, green. How good's light red? I think light red is like not. Yeah, it's still dark. All right, we're going back. We're going back to the OG colors. Oh, that's clean. Maybe I'll just do this in dark blue. I don't know, how, how unreadable is the dark blue? Oh, that's pretty bad. That's bad. <sighs> Set just the totals word to have a background, a background or a different color. Should I highlight the whole line or just the totals? Okay, that looks like shit. We, we, we have confirmed that that does indeed look like shit. Background so it stands out like a block. What background though? 
Backgrounds usually can get pretty jarring. I mean, I could use, like, the 32-bit colors and, like, pick an actual palette. But, like... I don't know. This looks great. It honestly doesn't. But... It's passable. I like how it is. There we go. See, that's a supportive chat right there. The rest of you... Just throwing me off. <laughs> All right. Just gonna make the snapshot and then, whoa, we went the wrong way. Um. Brrr, bup. Looks fucking great. Send a snapshot session G session. Send a snap session G. Fuzz target. Fuzz session. Um, use lock cell. Lock cell. Uh, uh, there we go. Use crates, core, locals, lock, interrupts. For sec. Yeah, we, we find and replaced real good there. Okay, and then we just comment out this line, and then we're multi-threaded, right? Right? Because we designed this in a really good, effective way, right? Right, y'all? Four workers. We had, like, a little, little bit of stuff going on here. That makes sense, because we had a negative number. That's fine. I don't care. All right, so then we bring it up on this. Okay, eight workers on that. Whoa. Dude, I am fucking up some lock. I am crushing some lock. Let's... Wow. Wow, 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 wow. Fuck. What am I locking? That's getting the page table. This is syncing into that on an interval. Another option, make it output the totals only and then output the workers if you press key. I do like that. Where is my perf going? Is it when I'm... Fuck. Is this... Get page. 
Nut mem. Whoa! That's a problem. That's a big problem. The only place we use get page is when we restore, when we do translations, and we have a master. But this is nuts. Ah. Did I put that in a hash table? Ah, uh, but I can't. Hmm. Shit. Must perform cow there. But up, but up, but up, but up, but up, but up. We might alias that. I could make get page return a virtual address. Let's try it. Let's try it. Um, attempts to get a virtual address which maps the vert address specified. But up, but translate through the page table. Um, got the original page. That's the physical address out of the page table. Hmm. That's from the master. That's from reset. That recurses. This is rare. This happens only on a page fault. This only happens on a page fault. So that we can have a lock on, so we can make that more expensive. This one should be a virtual address anyways. Hey Toby, how you doing? Attempts to get a slice to the page backing vatter in a host addressable memory. Addressable? Mm, yeah, there we go. It's going to be a ref to a U8 for 4,096. Uh, so, okay, then here we're going to do a unsafe yeah we'll, we'll give it we'll give a vert we'll give a vert adder right get page we use that here this one we want a virtual address so that we're fine with um this will get a virtual address, okay. And then we translate that virtual address here 
by doing an unsafe unsafe mm uh, fizz. How do I slice up fizz? Slice fizz mute. Slice fizz mute of the original page as pointer as u64 vert adder this. Uh, 4,096. Okay. Okay. So... Translate that. Then we get a physical slice to that. Not bad. Um, then here, I see, that's going to be the ridge page. In this case, it's just a ridge page dot zero in the, the source. Done. 423, mismatch types. Good. So we're just going to touch that, make sure it exists. Yeah, we don't even need to do that. We can just get the offset and return netmem uh, memory. Um, offset. And this will be vert adder this as pointer as u64 sum if we have network memory we translate that 460 if an else have mismatching okay so in this stage let vatter uh let's host vatter is equal to this and then we can convert that host virtual address into a It's the same logic as this. Urge page vatter. Yup, 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 yup. Touch that, make sure it exists. Hmm. It's basically the same code. We're gonna do this. We're gonna slump sh sh that in there. Okay, sum, then here, we're gonna read volatile urge page vatter as const u8. And this is the, we're gonna translate the urge page vatter. Okay, we're like, we're getting there. We're getting there, guys. Netmem. Yeah, we'll say netmem. Um, 491. Let orridge page is equal to this. Yes. Oop, page, 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 page. Orridge pave, page, page, pave, page. So we're going to translate that in the host memory. If and else have an incomplete, incompatible types. Uh, Yeah, I can do that. <gasps> In before crash. 
over under on the fact that this crashes. Oh, and that panicked, didn't it? Shit. Oh, is it only deadlocking? That's not that big of a deal. An MM? Oh, we're allocating something, aren't we? Um, lock. Okay, let's take a look. Page table lock. Page table lock here. Ooh, yeah, that's that's a bit aggressive. Can't allocate when we're doing that that sort of shit. A ridge page is equal to this. There we go. Just scope that lock a little bit down. And then it's totally fine now. Is that the only lock? We have session stats lock on an interval. We have that lock and then report stats on an interval. Okay, that's totally all it took. I swear I saw it triple fault though. Oh, that perf is better than ever. Fucking easy. Fucking easy. Okay, so that's 20,000. Right? 25,000. And then it'll bring on some cores. Sanic. Here we go. Cores coming online. Oh, I can't soft reboot. Yeah, yeah. Not on that machine. Four workers. Ooh, look at that perf. A hundred fuzz cases per second. Okay, was that not the issue? What the fuck was the issue? <laughs> They're not warming up, are they? Something's happening way too much. That perf is climbing. Um, coverage. It's not my coverage stuff, is it? It's not my atomic hash table. It's not making that coverage record, is it? Return false. Just do nothing on coverage? We'll see. Then we'll reboot it. Holy shit, it's something coverage related. Um, am I dropping packies? Is it the reporting of the coverage? Is it the recording of the coverage or the reporting of the coverage? If it's the reporting of the coverage, that's easy. I can just, I can just batch those. Let's check this out. Um, wait, that reboot? It's the reporting of the coverage. <laughs> Allocate a packet. Receive timeout. I mean, 50 millis is an eternity. If we got an ACK. I 
I gotta pack it. Send that. I mean, I can... Maybe that's too long, the, the timeout. Maybe I'm dropping a packet and I'm just spending so fucking long. Let's see what we got here. Oh, yeah. We must have been dropping packets and then we just wait so long before retrans. Yeah, we'll just do like 100 micros between packets. So if we drop a packet, we retransmit every 100 microseconds. I think that's good. All right, let's get in on hardware. There it is on hardware. That looks pretty good. What's the best solution to do bit flip and mutation? You have your bite in that? Just pick a random location and turn it into a random bite. That's pretty fucking clean. Um, all right, let's make sure we're getting linear scaling. So I've got 508 here. 508 divided by four, four cores. I should get 127 single core. So let me go back to single core and I want to see if I go to 127 for that. Nice. As long as this number is under 127,000, it means that we're scaling better than linear. We're scaling with hyper-threading. So yeah, we're definitely scaling linearly with cores, which is good. Beautiful. If I it was on eight cores, it's on, it's on a quad-core system, hyper-threads, yeah. Okay, so let's clobber rip and see what our um, let's see what our best case performance is. Let's take a look, see. Reset that, reset that. All right, both the servers will check in. Oh, there we go. There's the real numbers. So that's what we can handle. We got no problem handling this. No fucking problem. How did you solve the slow DHP boot? Um, that was I just I just uh, changed uh, Pixie to not in, in the test VM. I just have a static lease on my Pixie. What unit is that? That's uh, fuzz cases per second. So that's VM resets per second, effectively. So we're resetting the, the virtual machine to back to its original state. So restoring all of its registers and all the memory back to the original state. Still got file names over DHP. Um, I think I hard-coded that too, just for funsies. For testing, I don't care. Are you going to share interesting fuzz cases across machines? Like share the inputs? Yes. Why is the total going down sometimes? Is it? The total number of cases? I feel like I haven't seen it go down. Oh, I see. Um, like there. Oh, these are deltas. Sorry. Um, this is delta. Um, that's not cases. I want this. 
You're totally right. But luckily, it's not a big deal. <laughs> luckily, it wasn't a bug. It was just a like a misprint. <laughs> Thank you. Can we hard code static IP on real hardware pixie? Yeah, you can. You have to way of, you have to have a way of flashing your uh, BIOS or your network card though. You should print the total numbers of workers. Got you, fam. I got you, fam. Let me total workers is OU sixty four uh, and workers total workers. Plus equals client dot workers. Workers. Um, yeah, we'll put that out front, right? Uh, five should be good enough. Uh, uh, reset, reset. Okay. There we go. We have the total number of workers now. And then if one of these goes unresponsive, if I pause that VM, that will no longer be included in the totals because we'll go question mark and it'll be like, this was here at one point, this server did exist. However, we can't really rely on the fact that that server's there anymore. Um, but then if I unpause it, it comes back, search checking in, we include it back in the totals again. So that's the math there. <laughs> question mark? <laughs> I do like that. It's really nice to see if, if something may not be responding. Five seconds is an eternity to not send a packet. When I'm sending packets every 100 millis, I think. <laughs> F question mark? That might be a good one. Oh, yeah, but that performance is looking pretty fucking good, guys. Do I care about total numbers? Of Go fuck yourself, Quantum. Yes, I do care about that. <laughs> that being said, I'm, I'm rarely going to have this on enough machines that I won't be able to count myself, like just visually count. Um, I can't imagine I'll ever run this on more than like 40, well, 40 machines I probably won't be able to count. Probably fair. Uh, let's just do like three. On, on this. Do, 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 do. Workers, five, uh, five core serve. I don't know. I don't know a good way to, I don't know a good way to do that. I guess, you know, in the prints, I think I'm fine with that. Workers, five, and then that's... Um, this is clients.len. Oop, oop. Let me... Total clients. In the same way, um... I don't want to include the res uh, unresponsive clients in that. Total clients. Uh, do, 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 do. Reboot, reboot. Okay, yep, 12 over two. Looks good. Cases look good. Fuzz cases per second looks, honestly, that's a respectable number. <laughs> in, in my opinion, it's a pretty, pretty respectable uh, <laughs> Number of cases per second. We're not doing anything, but this is our this is basically our limits 
on a quad core machine. This VM is not realistic because VMs, I mean, this VM is basically the same as this, uh, but VMs suck, right? Because VMs are, are, are slow as shit. Um, that's why we don't use VMs here. We use bare metal because it's, it's literally like uh, 40x faster. <laughs> <laughs> it's like 40x faster and it's literally the same hardware. Do, 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 do. That being said, it doesn't really matter once we start doing things. Like, once we actually give it valid stuff to do and we're not just testing the VM reset performance, it doesn't matter nearly as much. Um, so, you should be able to reboot that and this. So now this is running a new workload. Um, oh. See, that one question marked, so I knew that I should reset it. <laughs> Honestly, it's still massively outperforming in this case too. Hardware, man, much better. 9.6 mega fuzz. Some thousand separators would be lovely. Yeah, there's no good way to format with thousand separators in Rust and maintain the padding. I mean, I could write that code, but I personally don't really care. I think these numbers are readable. But yeah, that's pretty clean there. 600,000 per second? Fuck yeah. And look at that, we instantly, instantly those VMs come online. So I'll reboot that machine. Yeah, and instantaneously that machine is online and running. No fucking problem. You spread the numbers in base 13. Uh, okay. Oh, yeah, and we're getting the coverage out here, which is nice. Um... Hey, Mamba Dev, how are you doing? We just made some cool shit happen. But now we gotta boot up another machine. I don't have another fucking machine sitting around. I just ordered a new server. What more can you ask? We'll be unboxing a new server in like two weeks. <laughs> One thing's work doesn't make you feel warm and fuzzy. I mean, I'm not surprised this works because the whole code base is my own code. So like... The odds that it doesn't work is basically zero. Um, if I pulled in some third-party code, yeah, of course, I expect it just won't work. But for my own code, since it's my own OS, like guaranteed, no bugs, no deadlocks, no crashes, uh, no incorrect behavior, no panics, no deadlocks, halts, confusing behavior, just in general, just uh, perfection. <laughs> I'm gonna need some napkins for that unboxing. I'm super excited for that. Like, I just, I can't wait for that server to get here, man. It's gonna, it's gonna, these next two weeks are gonna be a long two weeks. I don't look forward to packages frequently. Even when I get, like, cool shit. Even when I get, like, a, a fucking graphics card or a gaming computer. I really don't give a shit. <laughs> like, I can have a gaming computer show up and I can just have it sit in a box for a couple days because I don't, really care, but a server? Oh, that thing's gonna be fucking unboxed and racked in like 40 minutes. <laughs> what do you end up getting for server specs? You're gonna have to, you're gonna have to wait until the um, unboxing. <laughs> but it was not cheap. <laughs> it, it was not cheap. <laughs> there will be a, a server reveal. But yeah, I did settle on a, on a very specific server. It's kind of last minute. I, I had some new information come in, some new intel, some new uh, ideas, some new perf numbers that kind of gauged uh, how I actually wanted to run some of my software. Some kind of a power edge? No, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's a super micro machine. Is it Intel? Yes, it, it, it is Intel. <laughs> <laughs> Sweat. <laughs> oh, that's good. Yeah, Supermicro is fucking awesome. I love Supermicro. Never had a problem. 
All the Dell machines I've had have been shit. I had a Lenovo machine, it was shit. Some new Intel game, man. You get the super micro with or without the spy chips? I don't really give a shit. <laughs> but why would I care? It's on an offline network. I don't give a shit. <laughs> it's like... That being said, there's really no... Uh, I don't think there's any proof that the uh, spy chips were real. I think that was still uh, kind of up in the air. Confirm like, I don't really give a shit, right? Like... Um, look, if, if, if someone, if someone wants to get on my home network, right, and I'm a high enough value target, they're literally just going to fucking take my, like, UPS shipment and install shit on it, right? There's no fucking reason that, <laughs> that I should care about that, because it's not my risk, right? It's not my threat model. Um... Can hijack the spice just for extra performance. <laughs> ah, fuck. What are we going to do now? Oh, uh, we got to do module offsets. We got to do module offsets, and then we'll visualize the coverage we're getting. How's that, how's that sound? Does that sound fun? Oh, okay, so we need some... Do, 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 do. When we get coverage, uh, report coverage. It's over here. It's over here. How do you guys like this API? Is it is this is this acceptable? Twenty lines of code to to make a ten million fuzz case per second fuzzer that scales over the network. I think that's acceptable. Technically, this I could all get rid of because I could just have like a set once where I could make like a set once structure. Hard coded file names? I mean, that's your fuzzer. <laughs> None of the hard coded here. That's your that's your fuzzer. You wrote your fuzzer, man. That's on that's on you guys for uh, picking this as the 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 fuzzing file we're using. All right, um, we should get code coverage feedback, input sharing, and uh, module offset module offset stuff added. Or, uh, yeah, let's see. Let's do module offset. Let's get module offset going. I need that the most. Inject is mutation. Inject is whatever you want it to be. It's just called after the VM is reset, and it gives you an opportunity to do whatever you want. You can mutate. You can inject. You can do nothing. You can just not specify an inject handler, and it will just do nothing when you reset. That way, if you use like breakpoints or something, that works as well. Is this code running on the server uh, uh, to tell the workers what to do, or is it running on the workers? Um, what do you mean by that? Like, this code right here, this, like, fuzz function? This is just, this is just running on the, yeah, this is running on the server, if that makes sense. Yeah. So, this is what's, this is the code that's running in the operating system. Um, I'll eventually want to add some, like, context stuff, too, but that's not too hard, and I'll pr probably plumb that when I need to. Right now, I don't have a huge need yet, question mark, yet. Um, hmm. Didn't know if it was orchestration or workhorse. Yeah, I don't, I don't really do orchestration stuff. The server's only there to, like, capture the results. Um... But yeah, it looks fucking good, dude. That looks real fucking good. Uh, yeah, let's uh, let's see what we can get going here. Um, I guess if we want to do module offsets, you guys know you you guys know how module offsets work on Windows. Um, so I'm basically going to make uh. I'm going to parse out the um, module offset information. 
I'm gonna get that from the teb, which will go into the peb, which will then go into the like uh, in load order module list. Um, so let me find, let me get you guys a, a debugger, and we'll uh, we'll take a little dive. I'll show you kind of kind of what that looks like. Uh, we're gonna need some offsets, I think, but we can probably detect those things. Um, what am I doing? I'm going into chocolate milk. We'll go into sausage factory, just because I know that if I run make here, it'll open a debugger. <laughs> so I'm just going to do that. And there we go. I'm in a debugger. Okay. And then <laughs> we can just do a, we can take a look at the register state for thread zero. And this is the teb. So we can do a DT of the teb structure here. So this is the teb, the, the thread environment block. And it basically has all the thread local things that Windows wants to store. Um, but then the teb points to the, the peb, the process environment block. And that might be in the nt-tib. Uh, um, no, that has the self. Where is the peb? Somewhere in here, there's the process block. Here we go. Oh, right here, 60 hex. So 60 hex points to this uh, peb. So I can now look at the peb. And this peb has a, um, do, 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 do. Somewhere in this biznatch, there should be a pointer to, Got your heaps in here. All your good, all your good stuff about your processes in here. Uh, peb loader data is where it's at. So peb loader data then contains your in load module, uh, in in load order module list, and I should be able to do um, list this, and I think I can give it a uh, format, and I forget what these are. But these are basically in the load order list of all the modules, in the memory order, and in the initialization order. And I don't really care which one I get them from because I will normalize and handle and process them myself. So let's take a look here. Um, do, 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 do. Uh, forget what format those are in. Let me go just uh, steal some code quick. Or by steel code, I mean look at some existing code. I forget the uh, the structure that is used for these. Uh, Franzia shared. Win32 source this. There we go. It is a loader data table entry 32. Oh, that's for 32-bit. Oh, nice. We have 32-bit support. Um... I don't remember if I wrote that or not. Oh, is that... Is that not public? Oh, invalid expression. Um, list... Maybe I go this way? Okay, let me just find... Uh, um... When debug help list. There's a way to specify the type. Oh, DL, display link list. Shit, I always do bang list. Max count size. Yeah, I do want bang list then. Oh, you can run a command. Dash T, specify the type. Um, and let's take a look. I think, so this is what is in here, in load order links. And I think that's what we're doing. So we'll say in load order links. Uh, and then x dt this 
Well, that's not quite going to work. X commands. Fuck, I forget the I forget whatever you do, but whatever. Th this is the first the, the first entry in the list here. We can say display this. And this is your DLL name, your full DLL name, your base DLL name, all the information about the um, module that was loaded, right? So this, this gives us access to the module listing so we can turn our raw addresses into, um, uh, we can turn our raw addresses into um, uh, module offsets, which is what we're gonna wanna do. So you guys down for that? I don't care if you're down for it, because we're going to fucking do it. <laughs> uh, kernel source, win32.rs. Yeah, we'll just do it in place for now. So what we're going to do is I will, I'm going to do worker dot, mm, get module list. We'll just do that. We'll do worker get module list. And then we'll move this to one. Son of a bitch. We'll move this to one. Okay. So now we'll be able to call get module list. It doesn't exist, so we got problems. Uh ooh, get win um win64. I have so many questions about Windows internals. What kind of questions you got? I can't answer most of them. I don't really know Windows too well. Um, we're gonna take a look at Do I wanna cache it locally? Yeah, I do. I'll do it on the worker. What happened to Windows 9? It got lost. Somebody just RMRF GitHub and they're just like, fuck it. Just 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 rev it, ship a new one. <laughs> Is there a way to create a process without loading kernel 32 kernel base and NTDLL? No. Well, you can maybe do, um, shit. You can maybe, if you do like one of the, the minimal processes uh, that things like uh, whistle use, I forget what we call those non Win32 subprocess processes. I think there is actually a way. <laughs> no, Win789. Oh my god. <laughs> Thin process. Whistle2 is now using a VM. Yup. Thank god, it's about time. Impl dots are worker. All right, y'all ready for this? Ba 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 ba. Get module list win sixty four self mute self mute self mute self. Uh, then we're gonna go and first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna get uh, let gs base is equal to self dot vm dot Guest regs GS base. So this is um, get the base of the tib, and then we'll return an option so we can use some question marks in here. Okay, next. Was one was such a neat idea, insane but neat. Yeah, the perf was just really bad for disk. Okay, then we're gonna get the let uh, of the tab, and then we're gonna get the peb is equal to self dot read. I might change this to read into, where that reads into a buff, and we'll have write into. Beautiful. Uh, 268. Read into. 
Oh, right into? No, right from. Is there a text only Windows version? What happened to server Nano? It got turned into a container because not enough people were using it. And it's the biggest fucking tragedy ever because it was amazing. <laughs> Thing was fucking art, man. Um, I'd pay money for that, yeah. I mean, you kind of have, you kind of have server core, but that still has a GUI. You have a Windows portable environment, Windows PE, still has a GUI, but it's like 70 megs. Um, but yeah, Windows without a GUI would be a sweet. Unfortunately, that's what I would do all my fuzzing in if it were still up to date. Okay, how do I want to do read here? Um, I want to make a read on a type, and I think to do that I need to make a trait. Um, pubfn read mute self vatter vert adder returns a t t implements castable I have a library safe cast that kind of lets me do this with a proc macro, but I don't want to bring that in because it's heavy. Let buff is equal to, I could maybe do a macro here. Macros are a little gross. So I, I do want to do this and then I'll probably just unsafe impl castable on a couple things. Hmm. How long does it take to build Windows on a desktop machine? Like 24 hours. Obviously, it highly depends, but that's like on a workstation. Do I have to create my own distro of Windows if I want that? Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> I looked into doing it, and it's a lot of work. It's a lot of work. Which sucks, because I, I really want like a thin-ass Windows for fuzzing. I'm going to read a castable type. And then castable, I really wish that like two from LE bytes had a trait implemented so that whatever, whatever has that implemented, you can, whatever has to and from LE bytes, you'd be able to use by a, a trait. Chrome builds like eight hours on a single core. Yeah, Chrome, Chrome takes like fucking 30 minutes on a, on a reasonable machine. Chrome, Chrome's a pretty fast build time, in my opinion. So is Android. So is Linux. I would say, like, things that actually have long build times are, like, LLVM. It's gotten better then. I mean, I've been building Chrome for a decade, and I've never had an issue building Chrome in under an hour. Maybe you're accidentally building Chrome in all tests and running all tests. But if you just build Chrome, it's, it's pretty light. Um, buff. Yeah, I guess here we're just going to do a... How am I going to... How am I, how am I going to do this trade? I need to know how many bytes I need to make. Let's... Um, da, do, do, do. I think I'm just gonna, I think I'm just gonna do this. I don't know what I'm gonna do.
We'll just do this. Um, size of T. Self dot read into vatter mute buff question mark. T I guess I don't know the size of that thing. Oh, um you can do like T size and then T from buff. Yes. But we can make it work. Um reads the contents at vatter into a um, T which implements castable or like primitive. Yeah, we'll do that primitive. Primitive don't have that peb uh, 311 Yep. Okay, so that's close. And then we'll just do traits primitive. Um, da, 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 da. Constefen len. Constefen. Right, I did that. Size. Yeah, size. And then cast. U8 for, can I do an associated constant? I think I can. Self size. Yeah. Functions and traits can't be constant. Pfft. Bullshit. Um, buff. Oh, you can't do that, can you? Can you? Some shit. That's some shit. <sighs> okay. Eh? Self. There we go. Ample primitive for U thirty two cast buff. U8, self, from Ellie, uh, native Indian bytes, buff, try into, unwrap. That should work. Um, we got try into already. Oh, we got problems here. Um, Oh, not on the trait though. Oh, nice. 326. This is gonna be um, size of T, and then we'll just read that many bytes, and then we'll do uh, T cast. And just slice that shit up. Size of T, uh, core mem. Depends on a. Constant expression depends on a generic parameter. But it doesn't. 
Um, constant expression depends on the generic parameter. What? Three seventeen. Yeah, that one's fine. Who cares? And then this one. I don't know why that wouldn't work. What's up, Asaboot? How's it going, man? So I have size of. Um, why can't I do that? And I can't get the size of it in constant time. What the fuck? Um, I swear I've done this before. I guess maybe not. Depends on... This may fail depending on what the parameter takes. Dude, Rust really needs a, a fucking integer primitive type. I don't know why it doesn't. It's really annoying. That totally should... I don't understand why that wouldn't work. Um... It's, it's sized. That's fixed sized. I don't, I don't get it. Like, that's constant. Explain it to me, Rust. I've never actually used this. Nope, not that. Constant expression depends on a generic parameter. Because <sighs> this has to be constant. But then that generic should be... What the fuck? I mean that size of T is const. Is T sized? Yes. I have cast. And I, I can't, there's no point in doing that, right? Yeah, that doesn't help. Primitive requires sized. Sure. Oh, that's probably it, isn't it? Nope. May fail depending on what the parameter takes. But it takes a sized thing. Unless I have a T here, I do not. Like, I do this all the time, but I guess. Maybe not with generics. Gross. Dude, why is Rust so bad at working with binary data? Issues? Oh. You just, you just can't do that? The fuck? I s Ugh. 
ran into that the other day too. What the f That seems pretty basic. I'm pretty surprised that there's no way to do that. <sighs> um I can't I can't read that many bites, Desu. Oh, slice it by the size of T. Yeah, I see what you're saying. I can I can make that work. Sixteen bytes ought to be enough for anyone. All right, then cast. Expected a slice. We'll slice it up. Nice. Okay. And then we have that implemented here. And then uh, macro rules. Um, primitive type. Should also slice up here. Yeah, I have to. Okay, problem solved. Okay. Uh, 16, 32, 64, 128. Done. It's just a uh, trait to allow conversion of um to to allow conversion of a slices of bytes to primitives and back generically three thirty four okay so now I can read a e thirty two right I should be able to do that well technically I want to read a u sixty four advert adder gs base plus o x Wherever that peb is. Sixty hex. Um, got the address of the peb. Okay. Uh, mismatch types. Oops, some. Oh, I can't leak private type. Yep, 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 pub. Okay, so we got the pub, and then we want to get the address of... From the pub, we want to get the... Loader data? That's a pointer to the loader data. Um, let peb loader data is equal to the address of the peb. Got the address of the peb loader data. This is self read 
U64, Vert Honor, Peb plus OX18 hex, I think. Yep. And we'll DT this. Beautiful. And then we'll get the in order module list. There's a length of this structure, which is kind of neat. Um, in order flink is equal to self dot read u64 vert adder peb loader data plus ox 10. Get the in order uh, forward link print. Uh, module list in order flink uh, we'll just say mod list mod flink okay beautiful fucking art um so this is a list entry and that is of type loader data table entry. Okay. So we while mod flink is not zero, I just want to see if this traversal is correct. Uh, mute. Mod flink is equal to, and the forward link is, we're in load order in load order. It's actually important that we have that right, and I think we do. Uh, peb loader data in load orders at 10, and then at zero, we have the flink for the, for that. So we can do self read u64 vert adder mod flink. Uh, go to the next link in the table. And there's a chance that that ends up linking back to Flink. I don't know if this terminates at zero. It does not. So it terminates at the start. So we'll just record that. Let start is equal to mod Flink. And then we'll do loop, I guess. Yeah, while it's not zero. And then here we'll say if mod flink is equal to start break that looks good this is a save the starting location of the linked list this is a uh, traverse the linked list 30 and 38 for the DLL base uh, 30 and 40 DLL base and size. And we have a, a pointer and a, let me DT volatile or a verbose. Size of image. Oh, if I don't give it the type, I think it will tell me. Oops. Um, size of image is a U32. Okay, so base is at 30. Let base is self.read u64 vert adder mod flank plus ox30. And then at 40 hex, we have the image size, which is u32. So now I can print the base and the size. Why don't they terminate the list? That's just kind of how they do it on the Windows. It's a doubly linked list. Um, and that's good. Oh, the last one is zero. Oh, do I stop when it gets to... Oh, I stop when it gets to the blink. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mod flink, mod blink. Uh... Uh... For uh, links. Okay. While the mod flink is not equal to the mod blink, then I don't need this. 
this shouldn't print the null, the zero dot last entry. Fixed. Although I feel like the other one had four and this has. What? Oh, I got, I, yeah, I gotta do this. While the flink is not zero, then if the flink is equal to blink, because the blink has an entry and then I stop after that. <sighs> Done. Okay, so now I should have four entries. Son of a bitch. Not the logic I use? If the flink is blank, break. Oh, because I'm, yeah. Reading it the wrong way. There we go. Okay, we did it. Base size, and then we want to get the module information, which is a Unicode string. Um, and a Unicode string, we want the base DLL name. So that's, uh, we want the length, which is in bytes, at 58. So this is let name len is equal to self.read u16 vert adder mod flank plus ox58. Damn right it is. I uh, get the length of the module name Unicode string. And then, oh, Desu, you're gonna be you're gonna be sad with your uh, prediction there. <laughs> okay, this. <laughs> ah, got some sneezes. Okay, then we gotta read a UTF-16 string, which is a hard problem. Um, if name len mod two, if name len is less than, is equal to zero, or mod two is not equal to zero, return none. Make sure that it's mod two, UTF-16. Now, let name is equal to vec ou16 for name len as u size over to for ii uh, wide character and name dot iter mute dot enumerate self.read, oh, and then we'll get uh, let name pointer is equal to, we'll validate that too, uh, name pointer is equal to, mm, I grabbed, okay, there we go, self.read u64 vert adder mod flink plus ox60, and if the name pointer is zero, or this, or that, uh, you know, we'll just continue, Yeah, we'll return none for now. We're not in a, we're not, we don't have to deal with paging right now. Okay, uh, self.read u16 vert adder um, name pointer plus name len hmm, checked add i i checked mull to uh, mm. checked add that multiply that by two and this is a uh, water closet is equal to that virtual address multiply i by two add that to the name pointer Get the virtual address, read the value, 
Yeah, we should have a file name in very beautiful UTF-16 at this stage. Not going to be readable, but uh, oh, we're off a little bit here. Um, question mark. Is that it? What else we got for problems here? I'd probably fuck something else up. U64, U size. I, I, and U64. Okay. And then let mute. You don't need checked mole? You know, that's probably fair. Okay, those look fantastic. And then we'll convert those by doing this. Why do I do that on save? Oh, do I have to cast that? No, I don't. Name. Okay. Name UTF-8. There we go. String. Use alloc string string. Delete paste. All right, here we go. This will have the names. Oh, yeah. All right. Oh, stream quality options. Oh, they're here. Nice. Close enough. Uh, you're off on your ordering. <laughs> oh, and there's a way in a B tree map to do a binary search, isn't there? Range, yeah. If I do range, yeah, I think B tree map is correct here. So I'm going to have a um, this is in worker. The module list, B tree map from a. It's gonna take a. Oh, can I do this on a set? Um, range. What's the point of kernel base? I don't really know, to be honest. With bound, bound. You have a left inclusive, right inclusive range. I want to do a... Or to eight. K. Range has to be a range bound K. Um so if I do an inclusive I don't I don't know if I can use this. So it would give an empty 
Mm. I'm I'm just trying to find the closest element. I'm just gonna do what I'm what I'm used to. I'll just do a vector, and this will have a uh, U64 and U64. So this is gonna be um on a string. Uh, list of all modules. Tuple is base and uh, module name. Wow, I don't have vec. I think that's the last thing from Alec I haven't pulled in. 163 module list. You have a mapping of address to size name, and you want the closest module? Yeah. Not the closest module, I want uh, the module that I fit in. Which is slightly different. Um, pub fn resolve modules, mute self, uh, address, u64, option, this will return a string, and an offset, bloody colleagues <laughs> ruining my gamoza time. Um... Here we're gonna do a self dot module list dot um uh, vec binary search. Oh, I can do that on uh that's on a slice. Okay. Module list binary search for address. It takes a ref. Oh, I gotta do a binary search by key. Yeah. Binary search um, by key. Unless I can use by in this case, I think I might be able to. This returns a, this returns an ordering. Yeah, by key is what I want. And that takes a B and an F. So then the closure will yield from X the um, the base. So I'm going to find the closest thing. If it's equal, this is identical, in which case we will return a uh, entry and we'll return a reference. This is the string and the offset, uh, which is zero. Module offset in this case, zero. If it's an error, then this is gonna give the location where I could insert it to maintain binary order. Int.2 and then int, uh, adder minus int dot zero. It's not right yet, because I don't bounce check any of these things yet, but just wanna get this building, just reasoning about this, um, um, oh, match. In the vast majority of cases, a linear search would be faster since your module list would be small. In a lot of situations, the module list will have like probably 10 to 20 things in it, which I think just barely crosses over that threshold. Uh, oh, I match. Match this, binary search by key. And then that gives the, um, this will be a module Offset U64. And what I want to do is if we hit this, this means it's a, a perfect match, in which case that is correct. In this case, this will um this will tell me 
the location uh, containing the index where a matching element could be inserted. Oh, yeah, this is an index. Module list ii. ii. Let ints is equal to self dot module list ii. Ref that. So in this case, it's literally just that. Expected string. Just ref that shit. Ref this shit. Okay, so now this is the location. The index of the matching element. So in a perfect match, there's no offset. It's literally just right there. Um, then what I want to do is... Uh, if error is returned, containing the index where a matching element could be insert, s inserted while maintaining sorted order. So I actually want to go back one. And I want to say if ii is equal to zero, then return none. And this is uh, we our address is prior to any valid module. And this is gets the module that is just below our address. And then um, offset is equal to int dot, yeah, we'll just say um, if the entry end is greater than or equal to, uh, if, if the address exceeds, if it's greater than the end, um, int dot one, return none. Um, make sure the address is not outside of the uh, module range. Okay, right? If the entry, if the address is greater than the entry's end, then return none. And I should say when I make this module list um, inclusive, right? So it's inclusive of the last byte. So in here we'll say if the address is greater than that, if it's equal, then it's in bounds, but if it's greater than the end, um, then return none. Otherwise, we can compute the delta, which will be address minus int dot zero, uh, return the module plus offsets, done. So this will uh, attempt to resolve the uh, address into a mod module plus offsets based on the current uh, module list. All right. So then here we will do, first we'll do um, self.module list.clear. This is uh, clear the module list. And then here we can do self.module list.inserts dot push. Um, fuck, and I want that to clear that out. If we fail, I want to clear out the module list. Oh, there's not a good way to do that. I could wrap this whole thing in another function. I could put this whole thing in a closure. We can move it into the module list like a real person. <laughs> Let mute module list is vec new. Uh, create, create a new module list. And then module list down here, we'll do module list dot push base, base wrapping Add size is u64 minus one. Um, if size is equal to zero, return none. Um, wrapping add that to get the end. And we'll just whack in a name UTF-8 there for good measure. So this is uh, save the module information into, into 
the module list. Base plus wrapping add size. As you 64 minus one, the minus one is safe. Um, I could do wrapping sub and just or er, whoa wrapping add check uh, check to add. Here's the implementation for B tree map. Um. Oh, next back. I see. I see. I didn't think you could get next back. So that gets the last thing. So you go up into and including. You're totally right. Um, so let's do that. Thank you. I didn't want to think about the problem. <laughs> B tree map. And... So this will be a an address into an end and a you did mod size, but that's fine. I can change that uh, string. Okay, this of all modules uh, maps from base address to module to end of module inclusive and the module name. Thank you, good sir. See, what's convenient is I just knew that I could just start implementing it wrong, and then you would come by and fix it. And then I wouldn't have to worry about it. <laughs> so we'll do, um, let adder end name is equal to self.module list.range dot dot equals to the address. So inclusive of the address, next back, if address is greater than um, end, return none. Eh. If the address is less than or equal to the end, else none in this case we will return some ref name ooh base base and name if that is less than or equal to the end um then we return ref name and then the offset which will be the address minus the base Right? Uh, I just got some references. Not a big deal. Okay. Um, insert the base, which maps to the end and the name. And we'll just do this. Oh, fuck. Okay, and then we can do self.module list is module list, and this is uh, establish the new module list. Okay, so now what I should be able to do is worker.get uh, resolve module. Um, this, we'll just hard code this, and then I should be able to print this. Uh, here we'll expect failed, failed to get a module list. Wow, I'm doing some weird shit there. There we go. So this should theoretically work. Okay. Nice. So that gave me test and then that uh, offsets. And I'll print it in hex. And I'm pretty sure this is good. Test 
6 E20. E20. Yeah, 6 E20. Yep. Totally works. So now I have a module offset. Dab right with the raid. Whoop whoop. How's it going? Thank you so much. How was your stream, man? Um. Would you ever do a video in introducing the fuzzing? I always had under issues understanding the gist of it. Um, this channel is super interesting, but I never understand what he does. Um, even after asking. Yeah, I, I, I mean, maybe someday I'll do like an intro thing. I'm just, I'm, I'm just lazy. <laughs> it's a lot of work. It's a lot of work to do that. I'm just so lazy, man. Is fuzzing trying to brute force possible program states that it should be reachable from normal usage to find security issues? Yeah, very close. Very close. Uh, data shouldn't be completely random? Nope, because you want it to be something close. Um, you want it to be something close to what's actually expected by the program. Because obviously if you supply something completely invalid, uh, it'll never actually get past kind of the starting point of the program. So... Was good, went on a three hour angry boy on a troll. Ooh. Also got my TLS proxy working in IPS mode. Hell yeah, congrats. <laughs> was your angry boy a good rant there? I feel like I've ranted a little bit on a, I've had a couple angry boy moments. This is um, assuming the current process is a Windows 64 bit user land process. Extract the module list from it. Uh, this is my secret cap. I'm always an angry boy. I I definitely can tilt. I I tilt I tilt P fast, to be honest. Okay. Now what I want to do is I want to have like a, uh, oh, worker, worker, yes, this right here. Ooh. Um, uh, parse the module list for the target. Okay. So at that point, I should be able to use resolve module. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Resolve module, um... Um... I think I'm gonna have that take an option. This will be a sum name. Otherwise, in this case, it's gonna be a sum none adder. So it's just universally gonna be that. Uh, report coverage, coverage record, module offset, option. That's the fucking format right there. Holy shit, guys. Um, report coverage. We're going to get a coverage record here. And we're going to resolve. Mod off is equal to... Um, oh, so there's no longer an option on the outside there, is there? Resolve module. Yeah, it always succeeds now. <laughs> um, okay, why is he programming VMs all the time? I actually use VMs as super high performance, uh, like, sandboxes. Uh, for running these programs under test because when it when you crash your program it actually takes a relatively long time to spin up that program again um, Ooh, next back um, ooh, do, 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 do. Unwrap ooh. Um, mm, uh, If let's some mm. Yeah, we can make this work we can make this work uh, this, whoa, whoa. What did I fuck up there? Well, 
This should be close. Let's take a look. Add a semicolon. Uh, 2D1, no problem. Uh, self.resolve module. Uh, self.vm.guestregs.rip. That will always succeed. And then we have the module mod off zero and mod off dot one. Bam. D, 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 D. And that should just kind of work. Um, ooh, um, map X into cow borrowed. I think I can do that here. Yes! <laughs> it builds! <laughs> Thank fuck! <laughs> Alright, so that should check in, and it's checking in, it's reporting uh, coverage, which means that oh, brrr, all of that stuff happens under the hood, and then uh, every time we get new coverage. Um, let me it's coverage. Ooh, um, let mute coverage file is equal to file creates coverage dot text. Put a question mark on that. This is a uh, create a new coverage coverage file. We're almost there. We're almost there. I'm so fucking excited. This is what I wanted to do all day, and it's like just happening so fast. Coverage, 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 coverage. Here, uh, this coverage was new. In which case we can do coverage file dot write the module. Oop! If if module if let some module is equal to record dot module, then we'll print the module, and then an uh, module plus. And then in every situation, coverage file writes the hexadecimal offset and a new line. Oh, yeah. Okay, not quite. Uh, file. Um, use standard FS file, I think, is where I find that. Da -da 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 -da. Standard IO write. Is it lower self? I think it's lower self. Expected one argument, uh, 482, 182. Right under format. Oh, I do uh, right bang, isn't it? Right. It's been, it's been a while since I've written to a file. Question mark on that. I'll catch up to chat. I see there's a lot of stuff going on. I'm sorry for neglecting y'alls. I'm just trying to... Oh, we're almost there. Fuck. Ref, 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 ref. I think that's it. That's the last error. Yes! Okay, so now I should be able to reset this machine. And then I'll check in. And we'll get coverage. And I'll shit out to this file. And if I go into... Uh, chocolate milk server coverage. Here are all the things that I'm executing. Fucking easy. All right. What we got here? Um. Ah, uh, do 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 do. Because we want to constrain the running process. Provide a tightly controlled virtual memory and handle exceptions. Four, because we don't want to have the overhead of Windows to start up the process to our desired state. Yeah. <laughs> well, that sounds close to impossible if you want to exploit an Im uh, Windows application, for instance. That's what I've been doing for a long time. I'm very comfortable working in these uh, VM environments. Um, except I didn't know you watched Gamoza too. Hell yeah, we're all one big party here. I feel like all the programmers on Twitch kind of all watch each other because there, there aren't too many of us and it's pretty easy to check in on everyone every once in a while. Um, 
I mean, you wouldn't start Winamp inside of his VM. Um, if it was perfect, it would be Wine, wouldn't it? Well, I can run Windows inside of my VM. So I'm able to get the entirety of Windows running inside of my VM. Um, do do do. Uh, do do do. Okay. Let's see. Yeah, basic knowledge. I do a lot of different stuff here. Um, basically, uh, if he's fuzzing Winamp, uh, is he still running inside the VM? Yes, I would be. Now, it depends what I'm doing. Right now, we're only working on a userland virtual machine because it's easy. And because this, this OS and hypervisor and kernel are about three weeks old. But um, I will use this to run the entirety of an operating system in it with all of the same logic. Like, all the stuff you see me doing on stream is the exact same logic I would do for a, a full system VM, except a full system VM I'm going to be tracking CR3s to determine processes and some other stats. So I'm kind of just starting out with the basics because it makes it easier to interpret. Um, but eventually I'll just have these run full on VMs. And when I'm running full on VMs, I can have the entirety of Windows running in a VM. And at that point, it can go and, and Winamp can interact with the kernel and the kernel can respond back. It can context switch some threads. It can switch to different processes, create new processes, exit things, blue screen, cause interrupts. I don't really care. And I can capture all of those things and I can observe all those things. Um, and that's what I've previously done. And I have a bunch of different tools that let me fuzz at different depths. I have hypervisors that let me fuzz whole systems. I have hypervisors like this one that can fuzz a useland application. Keep in mind, this will be able to fuzz systems. It's just currently uh, the easy path, which is only applications. And then we'll worry about systems in a bit. Um, I also don't know if I can handle systems in nested vert, which means that the usability kind of drops for people without a physical server or machine that they can dedicate to fuzzing. Um, so I think this is a really good intro to the fuzzing uh, topic, uh, or more the fuzz harnessing topic. Um, and that's kind of why I'm going at this from this route. Um, I've got a lot of things. I've written uh, full system emulators that allow me to emulate full systems. I've leveraged Box to do that. I have tools that allow me to scale out. So I can do full system things. I can hook devices. I have hypervisors that can fuzz user land applications. I have hypervisors that can fuzz uh, kernel land things. I have fuzzers that can uh, run a VM inside of them so I can fuzz VMs. I have harnesses that can uh, let me run arbitrary architectures uh, with massive amounts of performance and fast resets. So this is kind of just a really good introduction to kind of the basics of uh, the basics of advanced fuzzing harnessing. <laughs> this is, is what I would say. It would probably work on bare metal instance type on AWS. Um, expensive, but only if you're running for a few hours. So I don't know if I can pixie boot those into an arbitrary OS. So I'm not sure. But anyways, so let's go grab our test application. Let's open up, open it up in Binja. Let me grab my Binja quick. Um, let's see. Hell yeah. And thanks for the sub basic knowledge. I have I don't see it in my feed. I don't know why it didn't pop up. I don't know if you did like a hidden one or something. Oh, you're a two month subscriber. Okay. Huh. The icon wasn't showing up for me. But thank you so much. Um Man, this is so cool. I should have gone a security route as well. Thank you, Fry Shorts with the with the Twitch Prime. What's the Fry uh referencing? Is that, is that Futurama Fry? Is your name Fry? Talking about Fry's electronics? Or are you talking about frying shorts when you short something electronically? <laughs> There's so many different ways I can interpret that. <laughs> or it's just a fun name. <laughs> I have no idea. <laughs> okay. Um, let me get this binge open. And uh, here we go. Let's do this. Yoink. Okay, so I've got... Banja, 
binary nanja. Shout out to Jordan, wherever Jordan's at. I think he's been begging for me to use Binary Ninja on stream, and I've never fucking gotten to it. But here we go, we got Binary Ninja on stream, uh, and I'm going to, we're gonna go, um, we gotta pull this file off the server, this test.exe, and we'll grab um, scoop off of 192.168.122.21, I think. Sausage factory test.exe dot. Oh, first fucking guess. We'll grab that PDB as well. So now we have the the PDB is the debug symbols file for Windows. So then we're going to pop up um, the test. This is in where's this at? Sausage factory. Nope, that's the original Sausage Factory. Um, chocolate milk Sausage Factory, test.exe. And let's see if I can get that PDB loaded up here. Load. And it looks like Binja. Oh, man. I You know what? I actually think it got it. Maybe it didn't. Um. Oh, maybe it does have symbols. I'm, I'm trying to figure out if this got symbols, and I think it probably did. It's disassembling a bunch of shit right now. Hey, chocolate milk is amazing. Hell yeah. Chocolate milk sausage factory. <laughs> yeah, we've got the dumbest fucking names of projects here. Um, yeah, you can always go that route now. You can always switch over to security. A lot of things port over to security, which is pretty neat. Um... Just build a bitmap tree of possible career choices. Do the optimal searches for info. You'd like to max maximize the effective knowledge of the field. Uh, dude, there's like, there's just so much fun stuff out there to learn. All right, so I should have, let's see if I have main. I do have main and wow. Okay, so this is the, um, wow. Okay, so I should be able to lighthouse load coverage file, and the file that we produced, I've never tried this before, we just wrote this fucking code. So, what we're gonna do is we're gonna go into server, and we're gonna click coverage.txt, and, and, uh, blocks hit, sort, yes, <laughs> whoa, <laughs> easy, fucking easy. All right, so now, using this, and let's find a fucking window that's free. Let's shift that to nine. Let's close this shit, because we don't need it. Let's close this shit, because we don't need it. It's reference for Rust. I know the language perfectly. Uh, so we go over to five, and now this, um, this should colorize what code I have hit. So let's go into, I'm not a Benji user, so sorry, Jordan, um, disassembly. And this will highlight the code that I've hit. Now, um, so we're hitting like a lot of shit that we shouldn't be hitting. We should mainly be hitting, yeah, I think somehow we're like kind of exiting from that location. I wanna, uh, give me into graph view, please. Disassembly graph, okay, now I know how to read this. So in main, we're hitting that return. This is actually where I want execution to be, is right at this address. And that should be where I took the snapshot. But we might have to take a new snapshot. We'll see, right? What's that pseudocode? Is it C? It's not exactly C. It's, it's just pseudocode. Yeah, just to make, a, a, make it a little bit easier to read. Um, when I'm doing coverage, I only really care about the actual uh, the raw bytes, which is interesting. So I am curious where that patched. So now we can take a new snapshot, right? All of that shit is now out of the way, and we can start working on making a new snapshot. So in this case, our snapshot is, um, I set a snapshot on hook me. So I'm gonna just print that address. I'm gonna, um, injected to percent um, x, zx, and this is the, location where I injected. Um, where the fuck do I write it? Snapshot address? 
Okay, and then we'll just void start so we can print it as a pointer and I don't have to figure out the fucking format strings for that one. Um, and where are we running that? We had a debugger running, didn't we? Okay, we like nuked everything, didn't we? Yeah, we did. Okay, not a, not a big problem. We'll just run make here. And this will now print where it's patching. And there, um, if we take a look at that, that should be the patch bytes. And it is. That patch the ILT. Hmm. Yeah, I think we I think we broke it. What is he patching? Thought he's snapshotting. So I hot patch in a jump to uh, some snapshotting code. So uh, the last stream I did, we wrote some snapshotting shell code here that we can inject into a process to take a snapshot. Uh, and that's currently what I'm doing. Now, uh, I was trying to do it from the C side of things. We're doing a test, right? We're having it uh, uh, hook itself. Um, although the address that it's using for that is not necessarily what I want. Uh, hook me. That's not actually the address of the function. That's the address of the ILT. Um, I want it to stomp over the bytes of that function. Why can't I get that address? Maybe I need to ref that? I don't think so. Let's try it. Let's see if that's different. Um... Okay, so that's still the same location. That's what I expected. I didn't expect that ref to do anything. Hook me. You hook me. This is where I want it to go. Am I stupid? What? How would I actually have it go right over that? What am I... Let's go, let's make an optimized build. You know what, if I make that static, if I make that static, I think I'm fine, right? Because it won't have a, it won't have that link table. Yeah, there we go. And now this should be the address of the actual uh, hook me. And it is. So we stomped over hook me with this. So, sweet. Now we got new snaps. Delete the old snapshots. Make a new one. This will make a new snapshot, which is the one that I actually want. Perfect. And then, cancel that. Uh, dump MA. We're just going to save a copy of this. Uh, Test.dump. OK. Exit there. And then, over on this side of things, I'm going to remove everything scoop over the snapshots put this as the file name for my uh, fuzz file name I think this is all it takes y'all then I have to set rip to the location that I patched which is um, this injected to here this is where I want to resume execution from and oops cargo run and then we should be able to load that up. And this is going to fail because it's going to hit a syscall. Um, oh, failed a map. Let's see what we got here. Oh, I lost some of the characters, didn't I? Um, this. That terminal is kind of behaving weird. I think it's because I like cut it off a bit. That one. I think that's the name. Nope, that's the old one. God damn it. Yoink. All right, we got this. Third copy and paste is the charm. It's like Stack Overflow. <laughs> okay, and then we should be able to run this, and it will download that latest. Oops, shit. Get, it's getting to that point of the night where I start to miss clicking things. Um, okay, so that should be reporting that information up to the server. We have 105 coverage, and 
I don't know why we're exiting. We're exiting um, likely due to syscalls. I want to actually report my VM exit reasons up to here at some point. And let's try and let's run this on hardware. Let's see what the perf is on real hardware. There we go. Uh, Three million fuzz cases per second. <laughs> That's pretty good. <clears throat> um. Okay, uh, wait, the process is being injected. Thought he is running the process inside the VM to get the snapshot out. I'm actually, so what, what I do is I have an application that I inject into, and I can use a debugger to inject into it. I can use uh, many, many different mechanisms. I can use an exploit to hook into these things, hence why I wrote this stuff in shellcode. Uh, but it effectively allows me to take a running snapshot of an application. I then can take that running snapshot of an application and transplant it into a VM where I can uh, kind of trace that information. So that's effectively what we've done. Um, so I don't need this coverage open because I know it works. So now what I want to do is I want to, I have to fix up this file. So we're hitting syscalls and the reason for that is because we patch over the original bytes. So what I want to do is I want to I actually close this um, I want to grab the most recent file for Binja. Let's go to um, uh, chocolate milk. Where was I? Where was I pulling that down for Binja? Test.exe. Where did I save that to? Did I do that in the Binja folder? No. Where the fuck did I save that file? I have no idea. Um, chocolate milk, sausage factory, and we're going to, oh, here we go. That's where I put it. Um, we'll scoop over from 192.168.122.21, sausage factory, test.star. I'm fine with that. I overwrote my current test.c, but that's in, uh, that's in Git, so it's not a big deal. Okay, so we'll reload this. This is now the new one. And the address, this is the address that we start execution at. Well, technically we're an offset from here. Um, so we should have uh, fuzz me or like test or whatever it is. Oh, I gotta load the PDB. Uh, fuzz, uh, what the fuck did I name that? Then test.c, hook me. <laughs> hook me, we're almost there. Okay, and then I really want this to kind of default to this. This is what I actually care about looking at. This is the only way I know how to read things. Okay, so I'm gonna have this, I want this to show me the bytes, the opcode bytes, and then we have to unpatch these things. So in our program, since we patched over these, um, it's just kind of part of the patching process that I have to know what to write back in there. So we're going to do, um, at this stage, we're going to do worker.vm.write from into worker.vm.guestregs.rip. Uh, this is a vert adder as u64. And then we're going to write from those bytes. Oh, x48, ah, b, x48. 48, 89, oh, I gotta not fuck this up, 54, 24, 10, 48, 89, 4C, 2408, 48, 83, 7C, 24, 10, 05, I think that's right, 48, 89, 54, 24, 10, 4889 4C 2408 48837 C 2410.05. Those are these bytes. So I'm replacing the instructions that I patched out. And then I gotta pull in vert adder from use page table vert adder. We'll grab that from here. Okay, and we don't have a write from. Mm, I'm calling bullshit. Yeah, it's not on VM, it's just on worker. So that's going to patch that memory. 
And we probably should put some semicolons in here, and we'll unwrap to make sure that succeeds. Okay, so that's going to patch in those bytes again. Um, and then we'll reset the server here. Okay, that checks in. And we're fuzzing, and the coverage is 249 because we're returning from that function, and then we're trying to exit. Oh! That's totally what, hap is, what is happening. So let's load a coverage file. Let's load our coverage from server, coverage.txt. Uh, I don't care. Okay. So this is telling me what I'm hitting. Um... Oh, and that hasn't been filled in. So some of these things we haven't observed. Yeah, we're definitely not hitting those. We shouldn't be hitting those. Um, I'm quite confused as to how we're hitting those. Um... <laughs> Oh, have I, that should recreate, the coverage file should be empty right now, right? Cat server coverage, yes, that is empty. Then I reset this, and the coverage file should get filled in, and it actually should be in order of the coverage when I find it. But we're having some issues here. Um, maybe... Okay, when this when this sort of shit happens, it often means that I I'm not looking at the same binary, which is possible. Um, that's where I scooped it down. Open test.exe, and it's reprocessing it. Oh. So if I go to 6E10 as an offset, so if I go to 140006E10, oh, you can do relative? Oh my god, that's sick. That is actually fucking nuts. 6E10. Oh, that's relative from... Mm, that's not what I want, though, is it? 1, 4, 0, 0, 0, 6E10. That's what I want. This is where we hooked. And that lines up. So the question is... Is my coverage stuff fucked? This is possible. Unlikely, but possible. Um, am I executing garbage? which is possible, unlikely. I don't think that's the case. Coverage files appears to be badly mapped. So we didn't get that the first time we loaded it. And I'm kind of confused. Didn't you overwrite the binary when you SCP'd it? But I, that's the binary that I want. That's the one that should be on the server. Like, this has the same address, so it's at least ballpark the same, but clearly there's something goofy that I'm doing here. We didn't get this bad coverage mapping the first time we did that painting. Um... What is the first thing we execute? Seven thousand. Oh, that's just the coverage, the way we do coverage. Um Okay, so I should have a sixty ten and I have a sixty three C.
which is this. And we shouldn't be hitting that. We should only be hitting this path, and then we should be returning. Yikes. What's going on here? Maybe I'm not resetting correctly. Maybe I have a massive VM uh, execution bug. Let's, uh, let's go to single core. Let's go to single core, kind of calm things down. To see if see if that helps with anything. I could put it in single step only mode. 249 coverage instantaneously. 6E10. We get 7,000. So I'm reporting coverage that shouldn't exist, in my opinion. Is that rip? Do a fuzz case. I'm gonna just uh, single step. I'm going to set single step to a big number. And in that big number, I'm going to... I'm going to do one fuzz case. And then I'm going to break. So we're only going to fuzz one fuzz case. Okay. And we're single stepping the whole thing. So these should be... The PC should be in order of what they actually execute. So we'll use this to debug. Uh, what we broke, um, 137 coverage. Okay, 6010. Uh, and I should be able to load this now. I should be able to load coverage file, coverage.txt. Oh, that's still saying bad mapping. Okay, that's very strange then. That's very strange then. 6010, 6012. Um, I forget where binge is. Here it is. 6010, 6012. I gotta show. I need this to show the address. 6010. Oh! This write is not happening. I've... I... This didn't patch the bytes somehow. Let's try this. That didn't patch the bytes. Um, which is fine. That just means that maybe I'm pulling from the wrong thing. 107. So that affected coverage. Good. 6E10. 6E15. Okay. Much fucking better. Um, load this. Still complaining. I don't know if that clears things. Can I clear? Can I clear things in Lighthouse? 6020. It should be going to 6022 then. Next. 6022, 24. Wait, 6022, then 24. What? Oh, did I not fill in enough bytes here? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. You just run the snapshot and code through the fuzzer? I think so. Um, where is that Gamosa's the descendant of the ancient bite testing people in the land of bite array? According to legend, sleep is not a requirement for these beings? Oh, hell no. Nah. Fuck. What is going on here? It's gonna be obvious. I'm just waiting for it to. I'm just waiting for it to smack me in the face. It goes to that sixty twenty two just fine, and then it goes to sixty twenty four, which is a big question mark. That's a big question mark there. Run the server. Run this shit. 
I feel like that right's not happening. 100 coverage. Hundred coverage. Okay, how am I getting a different coverage number each run? 20, 22, 24, 26, 28, 2A. And then it's just, and then, once we get to the ret, is RSP fucked? Maybe? Is RSP fucked? Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. I know what that is, I think. I think what's happening is we are executing our instructions and then we're executing move. Um, these are n zeros. We're executing zeros, I think, here. I think that's what's happening. Now, I don't know how those aren't crashing, but I guess that is um, ASCII just addition, I think, racks. So if racks is a valid pointer, it won't crash. So I think, for some reason, when we patch things, the patched memory is not copying from the original memory. So we translate, and we change this code. We change this code significantly today. Um, I think I am not updating that page. Let me just do a read. Let me read that page. Um, I know this looks like shit. We'll fix it. We'll fix it for you guys. I know. I know. We're going to print these bytes. Worker.read. Oh, let mute bytes. 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 <laughs> This is O O U eight. Oh, we're struggling. Uh, we'll just do 128 bytes, and then we'll read into worker read into mute bytes from rip as U64 as a vert adder. Uh, mute bytes unwrap. We're gonna print the bytes, and I bet we're gonna see a lot of fucking zeros in there. We're gonna see a lot of fucking zeros in there. Guarantee it. Slice that shit up. Where my where my print? Where's my print? My server's not running, so I can't get they can't download the file. There we go. <gasps> it ends in a five. Okay. Now if I don't write that, let's see what we have. I'm not copying the original page contents, and I guess I probably just fucking deleted that code on accident. Oh, it's all... Z oh, oh, God. Oh, God. Oh. Oh. Whoa. 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 Jesus Christ. Woo, lad. What is my rip? Let me print that. Uh, rip should be maybe okay. It might not have been set up yet at this stage. I might not have rip when I fork from that. Nope, that's the right rip. Okay, um, and that's from fork. When we do a fork, we get the guest regs. Oh, we set the guest regs immediately when we do a fork. And then the rest goes to master. So that goes to translate. So we have a couple different routines. We have get page, which we're probably hitting. And then we have translates. And if the mapping exists and it's valid, then we return it. Otherwise, we get the content, the original contents of the page from the master or from virtual memory. Or if the page is not present, we return none. We look up the page backing for that. Uh, we touch that page. Wait. Yeah, um, here we um, touch the page to make sure it's um, present. Then we translate that. So we get a read-only copy of the original page. Okay, here's where we fuck up. Um, promote the original page via cow. 
Otherwise, the page is not mapped. So in this case, we allocate a new page. We get a slice to the page. We copy that from the read-only page, the original. Um, and we don't have to do RL page because we already have, well, technically we do. Okay, then if a write happens, alloc fizz, slice fizz, then we map that in. Okay, in this case, we just map the original page as user presence, which is what we have from the page table, which is what we downloaded from the network, which is... Okay, so is it here then? Turns it that, if it exists, return it. Otherwise, if there's a master, get the page from the master. Otherwise, get the offset and the vert to offset. Back. VTO uh, offset, uh, vatter. I just wanna see if we're getting this hit. We should. We should have one VTO print. Now we're, now we're debugging. Now we're debugging real fucking bugs. These are the good ones. This is a juicy one. Shit. Uh, we got a couple VTOs. Uh, whoa. Translate that virtual address. Is that succeeding? Vert to offset. So these are the two places. That's the info file. VTO, we'll put one here. We'll say VTO2. Oh, I don't want to do the modulus stuff first. Let's just do the modulus stuff afterwards. And then we're going to panic here. Panic, stop. I just want to make sure that we're only looking at this one read. I'm trying to isolate this one problem. I don't want any other activity happening. Okay, we hit a VTO2. We'll delete that there as well. So we're guaranteed only one right. Beautiful. Whoa, whoa, if I do a write to the, oh, if I do a write to the master, it breaks. Okay, well that I can debug. Uh -huh. Oh, okay, well that means if it's present in the master, that path is, I do get page on the master. So the path that we're hitting is, I'm trying to write to memory. If I have a master, it's not in my page table yet, if I have a master, I will get the page from the master. And then I'll jump up to here, I'll get page with the aligned virtual address. I will then translate it in the master's tables, which it should be present. In which case I will say, ooh, mm, print master get page from trans. We'll just do that for now, good enough. Okay, we are hitting that. And let's see if this is zeros. Oops. Test is equal to this. Print test as hex bytes. I did feel like I kind of got away with this too easy when I wrote this code, so this is good. I, I deserve to be punished for this. I definitely had a problem here. Okay, that looks real. So I am giving that. So I'm hitting that path here. I have the original page virtual address. I then 
translate that in the host page table. Okay, let's check the print RL page O2X. I mean, isn't the DNBDSM debug? Oh my god, I like that. I like that a lot. That's so fucking good, dude. <laughs> okay, that's all zeros. Oh! Ridge page translates the original page virtual address, which is the master get page, which is this, which is the ridge page, which we printed, which is good. What's this shit that we're printing? RO page. Oh, that is the good one. And then we hit RO page again. That's when we do a read. Promote the page via cow. Copy into the new page, write in the page. If it was a write, copy from the RO page. Map that in. In this case, Map in the original page, the physical address of it, as user read only. I'm still confused here. Oh, so this write causes that to happen. And then we go and we get an RL page, and that one came from the master. Right? Print master page. I'm trying to figure out where I'm actually getting these pages from. Master page, RO page, this. Okay, that's fucked. Let's print this. Align vatter. Just so I can see what address it's translating. But that should be six, uh, 3D6, three zeros. Yeah, 3D6, three zeros. So we go to the master and we're like, yo, dog, hook me up with your page. And that does a translation on itself using his page table. And here, I'm just going to say uh, print mapped. the fuck am I doing? Mapped. Didn't we print that and it was fine? Okay, um, O2X, unsafe. We'll just do uh, 32, 30, 34 bytes, fuck it. I just want to see what those bytes are. Are they zeros? They're not zeros. How the fuck are they not zeros? How? We got mapped. We then go to here, we get the, oh, I can't wait, I can't wait for the epiphany of how fucking stupid this mistake is. I'm super excited. Um, print page vatter is p, orridge page vatter dot zero, uh, this is hex. That's the page adder, and then this is the, um, We'll slice this shit up here. Uh, oops. Put that here. Let slice is equal to this. 
sliced page vatter in map sliced uh, get rid of this and I think we're good okay not quite uh, sliced not implemented for that Um. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I fucked up. I printed the wrong thing. Okay, so this is going to be the um sliced as pointer. That's basically what I'm about to return out. And then we'll see if I somehow lose that information, which I shouldn't. In map is this. Page vatter is this. Okay. So then I know that it's something about this translation here. The original page virtual address. Oh, fuck me. I know what it is. Um, wow. Wow. I use large pages. I use large pages for that, for that, um, for the, uh, f uh, the virtual memory. So this is the uh, page and offsets is equal to this. Fuck me. Um, vert at our page. Oh, this is a fizz adder. Plus offset. God damn. Wow. That was that was rough. That was, that was, uh, wow. Wow. Doozy. Doozy for sure. Okay, um, now we have the contents of this, and that should be what we wrote in, the 488954. If we don't write this in, then this is what we patched. And that's the only place that I do that is where I do get page. So any place that I get page, I gotta be real fucking careful. Get page. In this case, I get the original page. That's a virtual address, so I don't care. If I ever translate the result of a get page, which I do here, I think this is the only spot, then I do care about it in that, in that one extraordinary circumstance. Wow. Wow. That was rough. Yeah, it returns the physical page, and then I assume that I use 4K paging, but I don't. Okay, so that has the unpatched. Yep. This is my, this is my jump, the FFEO, there's the jump racks. So this is um this is uh push racks. Or uh, sorry, this is push racks and then this is uh move racks immediate 64 and then this is jump racks. So this confirms that I can patch it from the master. Um, then I can resolve the module list, and we should be back to normal. What a little what a little tangent that we went on there. So this should be working. 89 coverage. Fantastic. So now if I go here and I load the coverage file. Um, it's still not happy about something. I don't think I make another mistake. Um, so we're right there. We get uh, EA7, so that's the jump. So we jump to EA7. 
That'll have us return out to the caller of this. Um, and the caller of this is... Um, here at the end. Okay. So here's what, hap what happens. We, we jump into here. This is where we take our snapshot. We then restore the bytes. We return out of here. We return to here. We then go here. We call this. We return. And then we return out of there. I don't know why we're getting bad coverage mapping. One or more of the... Um, uh, okay, so let's see. So we go into there, then we go into kernel, and then we'll pop out a kernel 32 and 8738. Where's that at? Okay, that's ret, that's ret cleanup, and then we ret from this function. If you take a look at the xrefs to here, we have this. That gets called from here. So this is this is the end of main. Get to this stage. We then return out. We call this. We call this. We jump here. Uh, do some module stuff. Jump on equal. Oh yeah, where do we go after CO24? Because that's the code flow. CO24 is the end. Why is that stopping? Oh, my timeouts. I'm hitting timeouts. I still wish Lighthouse told me uh, the reason. Could be that Binja has uh, has your patch. It does not. I do. Uh, this is the original binary without the patch. So that shouldn't be the case. Worker fuzz case, and my timeout is really aggressive right now for single stepping. So I'm just gonna set it to. I'll just set it to ten seconds for a timeout. And then we'll kill the server, restart the server. Okay, now we'll see. We'll run this basically. We should have more coverage. Yeah, 2,577 coverage now. Okay, close that. Lighthouse load coverage file. Oh, it's not complaining anymore. Okay. Oh, maybe it gets confused if I don't see the like end of flow or something. But, okay, that worked. And this looks valid now. And this should reproduce. If I run this again, I should get 2577 exactly. Ooh. Ooh. What? What? Why though? Restart. Twenty two fifty one. Oh, 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 I'm not always single stepping because I'm running for so much now. Let's just set this. Um, uh, single step will be zero here, and then I'll just set it here. Single step is five fifty thousand. Right. That'll guarantee that I always single step. I think I'm stopping single stepping at some phase. Okay, so this should be the correct number. 2664, and that's higher than all the others we've seen. Stop that, reboot. It was just stopping single stepping, and it was just a random sampling. Oh, why is that off by one? I don't like that. <sighs> really? There's 2664. 
2663. Okay. Uh, coverage 2663.txt. And then we're just going to try and figure out why that's happening. And we'll just get a 2664. Oh, there's another 2663. Run this again. Okay, um, get uh, vimdiff coverage 2663 coverage.txt. I'm missing 6e10. Oh, um, yeah, the very first instruction I may or may not see, depending on. Okay, yeah, that's not a big deal. That's fine. Okay, everything's good, everything's normal. We're happy. No bugs. No bugs. No confusion. No errors. Um, worker. Put an underscore on that. So here we'll get the modulus once, and then we'll loop forever. Fuzzing. And now we're actually going to do fuzz cases. Arm covered star. Run this. So can you add the initial rib to coverage? I don't really care because my coverage is lossy, um, but it should always converge to this. So if I'm running multiple fuzz cases, then I'll eventually see it. But in some cases I won't. 2664, this will eventually hit 2664 when I get the right sampling. Just takes a little bit of time to get to perfect, but that's fine, that's the point of this lossy coverage. And there we go, we hit it. Um. Okay, so now that that's working, now we can actually fuzz. So here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna put a, I'm gonna put a breakpoint in to terminate fuzz, uh, fuzzing when I hit a certain location, um, and I'm just gonna set that at the end of the function, right? The end of the function that we're fuzzing, and this is a common thing that you want to do when you're fuzzing. So here's all my comparisons. This is the end. This six e a seven. So I'm going to write in to this guest rip plus OX 6EA7 minus OX 6E10, right? It's gross, but it works. And then I'm going to write in a CC, which is a breakpoint, an int3. Um, unwrap. So now we're only going to get like five coverage things. Right, because we're only we're only really fuzzing the part of the function that we care about, the part of the function that has user input. Yeah, we have six coverage, and that's basically going to be um, it's everything until the six EA seven. Technically, we will see that as well. Yeah, we'll see the six EA seven. So one, two, three, four, five, six instructions is our total coverage because we're not fuzzing anything yet. So now what we want to do is we want to fuzz. So let's set this timeout to something a little bit more aggressive. It doesn't really matter. We're not hitting the timeout. And now let's make an example of a fuzz case. So in this case, we're going to... Um, our fuzz case, RCX... RCX is the... Um, uh, at snapshot location, RCX points to the input buffer, and RDX is the length of the input buffer. So what I can do is I can say um, self dot, and we'll do let input is equal to uh, OU8, and I don't know what the max length is of the input, but let's go find what we set up in test. We set the max input size to 128 bytes. So we're going to make an input, 128 bytes, make it mutable. We're then going to pick a random size. So we'll do worker.rng.rand. Uh, let size. Input size is equal to this mod input.len plus one. So from zero to the length inclusive is going to be the input size. We will set the worker dot vm.guestregs.rdx to the input size. 
So this is um, create an empty input. We're not doing feedback yet. This is uh, pick a random input size. Now I will do input. I will just do for this in zero dot dot uh, worker dot rng dot rand mod. We'll do eight byte corruption up to eight byte corruptions. We'll change inputs from worker dot rng dot rand mod input size. Um, in this case, we're actually going to go this way. We're going to guarantee that the input is at least zero. Ah, uh, we'll do this. <laughs> we'll say if input size is greater than zero. That way we actually test all the input sizes. Then we will pick a random input size and then we'll um, fill it in with a worker.rng.rand as u8. So that will create random bytes. And then we'll inject that into the buffer pointed to by RDX. So this will be worker.vm.guestregs.rcx, sorry, is where the buffer is. And the buffer that we're going to write will be the input for the input size unwrap. Okay, so that should inject a fuzz case given I fix up some of these delimiters and basic errors. Um, vert enter at a comma here, probably important. Yeah, there we go. So now we have a fuzzer. So now the coverage will go beyond six, but we're not doing feedback. So we have five bytes that we have to match. So we'll see, we hit eight. We got past one of the ifs, and we'll eventually get past another one of the ifs. Now we got 12. So what's happening is we are randomly generating bytes in the right locations that cause us um, to end up hitting this coverage. So we hit this block. Um, Okay, so basically, to hit here, we have to have one byte correct. To hit here, we have to hit two bytes correct. Um, and in this case, the, the lossy coverage is actually kind of hurting us, because we're not able to see when we... Um, we're definitely generating two bytes correctly, because we're, we're fuzzing plenty fast, I think. Crept up to eight bytes. Um, was experimenting with chocolate milk on Linux binaries yesterday and actually worked? Absolutely. I, w I would not expect it to not work on anything. How did you take the snapshot? Did you, did you make your own snapshot format or did you convert it? Okay, so that coverage. I think I'm going to update... Um, can we have full coverage if we fill in the code with int threes and gradually replace the code? Uh, you you can do that with EPT. Uh, with EPT you can do that, but you can't do that with normal paging. Um, okay, coverage and... Uh, Single step, okay. So the problem is I'm not randomly sampling that coverage frequently enough, which I'm kind of surprised by, unless somehow I fundamentally can't generate. Oh yeah, I think, oh, the odds are actually relatively low. Yeah, the odds are just lower than I think they are. Oops, uh, let's kill this, reset it. Oh, that's way too many um, exits there. On hardware, we probably won't have this problem, so we'll try it. Yeah, on hardware, we don't have that issue. We got 12 coverage immediately on hardware. I guess that preemption timer is too too low on uh, in nested vert. Fucking nested vert, man. <laughs> Too aggressive a preemption timer. Well, we did get 16 coverage. 
So we did make more prog progress when we ran it on real metal. OK. So basically, what we want to implement now is uh, code coverage feedback, which is a technique of feeding back inputs uh, that previously caused coverage. So the way we do this is really fucking easy. Like, code coverage feedback, people always talk about it being a big fucking deal, but it's really not. All you do is we're going to make a vector in the um, struct fuzz session. So every time we get new coverage, we're going to save the input that caused it. And I'll have the input, uh, input inputs. This will be an atomic vector, which will contain vectors of bytes. This is, these are the inputs which caused coverage. Uh, and where you will eventually associate these databases, but right now I don't care. Um, use atomic vec, atomic vec. And ooh, we got to pull that kernel source cargo, car, cargo, toml, ht, uh, s, ht, atomic vec, g. OK, so we should have atomic vec now. Expected a constant argument. Yep. Um, this has a fixed number of entries. We'll say 4,096 inputs. Vec we don't have in here, so we'll grab use alloc vec vec. Okay, 841 missing inputs. Inputs is equal to atomic vec new. Create a new vector. And then on coverage, when we report coverage, if the coverage was new, which is this condition, then we'll save the inputs. And we need a way of saving the input, so we need a way of tracking the input on the worker. So we'll just do pub f uh, fuzz input is vec u8, and this is the uh, fuzz input uh, for the fuzz case. And then that means that in here, this input will actually be immutable reference to worker fuzz input. And then we'll do input.clear. So we clear that input. We reuse the allocation so we don't reallocate because allocations are slow. We've got a fuzz input here, vector new. Got one here as well. It's just empty. Perfect. Now I got some borrow problems. Um, to do this, I'm going to do fuzz inputs. Um, I might put this in an option and just take it out. from net won't have a fuzz input, this will. And then it's on us to fill that in. So here we can do fuzz input dot take unwrap, input clear, and then at the end we can do worker fuzz input is equal to some input, so we store that back in there. That's a common technique that I use. I could also do like a ref cell, because I don't need to share this between threads. So a ref cell would uh, also work here. OK, 721 inputs, no problem. Um, we can actually make that pub, I think. Yeah, we won't. We won't. So um, report coverage. When we hit this, we will say session dot if we hit new unique coverage, we're going to save the input that caused that coverage. And we're going to do that by writing to session inputs push self fuzz input clone uh, unwrap uh, if let sum input is equal to self fuzz inputs, then we will push input.clone, and this is the same logic for both of these. So we just do boop, boop, boop. OK, so now we save the inputs. Um, oh, and that needs to be boxed. So we'll box up the vector. It's kind of gross, but whatever. And fuzz input, we'll just ref that, because we don't want to 
don't want to end up moving that. All right, so that is now saving inputs. So now all I need to do is I need to implement a routine on worker, which is um, pub fn rand input mute self. Ah, eh, just self. This will give a reference. Um, get a random existing input option. It's a chance. There's a chance we have no inputs. So in this case, we're gonna uh, get access to the session. Get access to the session. Then we will do um, let inputs is equal to sell, uh, session dot inputs dot len. Uh, get the number of inputs in the database. And then we'll do if inputs greater than zero, then else none. Then here we'll do uh, session dot get input uh, self dot rng dot rand mod inputs. Okay, so this is uh, get a random input, and this is um, no inputs in the DB yet. And I don't have a get on that. Oh, session.inputs.get. Um, and yeah, I want to actually return uh, map. That's a vector, so we'll just do this. And now it's an option, instead of an option vector. Oh, yeah. Um, I guess we... Uh, deref ref that. Expected slice, found that. Ah. Oops. Let's do as slice. Get a random input. Okay. Uh, return something owned by the current function. Yeah, because we have this reference to this. Ah, <sighs> fuck. Oops. Um. I could potentially copy it into the current input. Yeah, I want a way of getting a uh, getting a random input though. That's really important. Um. What can I do here? Passing a buffer to copy into? I really don't want to do that. I want to be able to give a reference. And the issue is that I could replace the session with none. Is there no way I can return a reference to that? Oh, because I clone that. Wait. Wait, I don't want to clone that. I can just do this, and I'm fine. Holy shit. I did the clone here for lifetimes, and then here I don't need it. Okay, so here we're going to create an empty input, and then here we're going to um, whew, rand input, get a random input, and we'll say if let sum input is equal to this, then we'll do input.copy from slice. Uh, extend from slice inputs um, else pick a random size and the random size will just be input dot um, uh, zero dot dot input size dot push um, for each 
uh, input dot push. Is there a way to do this in a better way? It's kind of how I always do it. Pick a random input size, and this is uh, use an existing input from the corpus and clashing names. I shadowed. Yes, I did. Um, old. Thank you. Extend, repeat, zero, take, len. Feel like I, pr I kind of like this more. I don't know if this is worse though. You need to pull an iter repeat to use that repeat, don't you? Whereas this works without having more use declarations. Perflies, it should be identical. Set the input size. Input dot len. And this is uh, corrupt the input. Corrupt the input. Okay, and then uh, inject the input, and then save the input back with the uh, uh, worker. Okay, so input size. Oh, if input dot len, and in this case input dot len. Same thing here, this is just input. Right, all this code is whatever you want to do for your fuzzer. And this should uh, be close. Uh, IL is input. Do you, Dessa, do you have a solution to this problem? <laughs> I do this so much. You just have to like bind it. Can you put it? What if I put that in curlies? Can I do that? This, does that do it? I don't think so. No. Uh, let i l is input dot len. Might be a bit random. What keyboard do you use? Um, it's a DOS keyboard with Cherry MX Blues. Okay. So let's uh, we reset that fuzzer and let's try it. So now we're doing uh, feedback. And let's see. Should be doing feedback. Okay, that doesn't look great though. Um, uh, print. Old input size this old dot len. I just want to print some stats to see if it's like fucking off. I think it is. Old input size zero. Ah uh, yes, I uh I know what this is. I need a random chance of not doing this. If sum if zero sum rng dot rand mod Two. So if RNG ran oh, self worker. So there's a 50% chance that we try to do this. Okay, now this should right. If that mod two is zero, and that is sum, uh, print input len is this, input dot len. Okay, clearly this is just a logic bug. Input len is zero, mod two. Print. Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. 128. Okay. All right. I was about to say, like, this shouldn't have these problems that we're having. Okay, here we go. Online. God damn it. What did I fuck up this time? 
Oh, there's coverage. 12. And now we just have to pick that input. I don't mutate the size, but that should be good. I should have two inputs in the corpus right now. Um, print il input .lan 128 plus one. Yeah, it's the size of the buffer and then plus one so it's inclusive when we do the random. Okay, oh, there we go. We got some fives, which is the correct size. And then there we set the input length. Um, okay. Pick a random number. Like, I feel like that's now working. Coverage 12. Maybe that lossy coverage is killing me. I don't think so, though. Why am I not progressing? I write in input as slice. I'm doing something stupid, I think. Input. Pick random input. Mod 8. Get the length. Pick a random location, fill it in with a random byte. Reprint is present in court. Yeah, I know it's in there. I just would have to use it. I'm just too lazy. So length is greater than zero, which it is. Set the input size in RDX, which we do. Right to the pointer in RCX. Um, I, I'm confused. What, what do I check for? Hello, I think. Um, O2x inputs. Just gonna print the input. I've, I think I'm doing something stupid. It's, it's possible that the coverage stuff is too lossy. So there's the inputs. Now it should be sending the five, the fi size five inputs a lot. If RAND mod 2 is 0 and there's an existing old input, so I'd expect to see a lot of the. I would hope to see a lot of 5 byte inputs. Oh, it hasn't gotten there yet. So I gotta pick the I gotta pick the right size. So once this coverage goes up, there should be a five length thing in that database. I think this corruption is just too weak. I'm just gonna do this. Worker RNG Rand. Z8. 
Um, and then this, we'll just say, rand up to, just corrupt the shit out of it. Well, that's gonna hurt us to some extent. Let's see what we got here. There we go, 12. Obviously, this fuzzing algorithm is trash, right? <laughs> it has to brute that size and a new byte. Quite frankly, I might just want to do one byte of corruption. Let's try one byte of corruption. So I should have a lot of inputs in there with length five. Unless there's something stupid I'm doing where I'm not actually injecting, because we haven't seen it get past this point, and I would expect that. So I'm gonna say if input.len is five and input to two is equal to b o x uh, x sixty eight. Oh, we can just h e panic. Good. We should hit that relatively frequently. So the fact that we're not is oh, we gotta ref that. Don't you have lowercase? I don't think so. Oh, it is lowercase. You're totally right. Thank you. I would have blindly just n not looked, trusted myself. Wow. Oh, and this I can do uh, input sets len, or not set len. Um, Resize, zero for five. I think it's the other way. Uh, five for zero U8. Um, well, clearly I'm doing something stupid. Just got to figure out what it is. Good. Am I putting it back into the worker? I should be. Um... Inputs. And here I should be able to assert input len is five. It should always be five now. We've, we've forced it to be five. It's just, some, it's just something I'm doing wrong in the fuzzer. I don't think this is actually an issue. Good. Okay, so there we hit it relatively quickly. Whoa. But the odds should be like 1 in 256. Well, 1 in 256 times... 1 and 2 times 1 in input size. So let's see when we push inputs. It 
should be it should be like one over two fifty six times one over two times one over two. Saving input. O2x input. Maybe that's getting fucked here. But we'll we'll see what this input is that's getting saved. Whoa. So that needs to pick the right byte. Uh, I don't want to save multiple inputs like that. That's a big that's a big no no. Um forget I was doing that, but that uh, still doesn't really explain. Okay, there we got the 68. And once we got 68, it starts feeding back real fast. So let's take a look here. Yeah, I'm adding too many um, inputs, I think, it is probably biasing me quite a bit. But there we go. We got 68. And then next. We'll get that next here. Basically, a, a 1 in 5 times 1 in 256 per byte. And I just, I don't know why it's taking so long to hit that. What am I... Oh? Doesn't it reduce the chance of using a good input? Not by much, though. I mean, this is my whole corpus. I don't know how I'm not filling in that bite quickly. I'm doing something stupid. What is... what? I have those inputs. Making it to two bytes is astronomically difficult. Um... Print num inputs. I just want to see. That looks about right. Maybe my get's not working. Saving input. The fact that it's getting stuck here means I'm I'm just I'm doing something really dumb. Like I'm not using the right input, I am not saving something, or maybe my atomic vector is borked. Uh, I think that's unlikely though. Let's print the input. Mod IL, mod input length. Like I've written this code a billion times. Yeah, it's flipping random bytes. And I should pretty frequently, if I say if input zero is equal to byte H, print this. So we're gonna limit it. Once it hits that first coverage, it should spew these. Yeah, that's like, it just instantly scrolls off the screen. Uh, you know what? That's not as frequent as it should be. That's definitely not as frequent as it should be. What's going on there? Why is that going so slow? Our perf is fine, right? Let's 
What am I doing wrong? Why is it not getting corrupted? I don't know. I, yeah. Like, clearly there's something catastrophically wrong with what I'm doing here. Maybe my RNG seed is turning into zero. Uh, oh, that's that. Okay. Um, we're here at rng.rand mod il. Okay, that's up to that length. And now you just need to see what this is. Is my RNG seed getting reset every time the VM resets? It shouldn't. Nope. What the fuck? And those are just different inputs in the database. Worker RNG Rand. What the fuck is going on? Get the input, clear it, extend from the old. Like, how is it not corrupting anything? <sighs> Let's check my RAND. Worker RNG. I'm not making a new worker. Yeah, I'm not changing that. It's definitely getting new stuff. I, I I don't understand how this is not corrupting bytes. Can you actually see what I get from old? I mean, I, it, it just, right now, I don't, that shouldn't matter. What should matter is the fact that this is not randomly flipping a byte. Like, we should see different bytes in here all the time. Like, it's just, it's so catastrophically wrong. Get the original seed. Seed, shift that shit. Set the seed. <laughs> Like you see the problem. <laughs> it's 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 definitely massively borked. It's f massively fucking borked. What the fuck? I I don't I don't get it. Mod 5. I'm just going to put it right there. What the fuck? Uh, 
Oh, and we got the cover. Um, got the coverage from that. What? Rust compiler bug? Yeah, I don't know, man. Right? Fill it up with random bytes. I don't understand my life. Two bytes? One byte. I don't understand this language anymore. Nope. Nope. Can you consume a value from the RNG? Yeah, I can do that. Oh wait, now it's working. Wait, what? I have no idea. I have no idea what's happening. Nope. I'm I'm at a loss for words. But two works. Consume two values. Nope. It it's 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 not the RNG. It it has nothing to do with the RNG. That's, that's what I would expect. Let's see what we got here. 
Reset the server. Here we go. It's just not the RNG in this state. In this state, it's not making any progress. It, like it's, it's not even finding a single bite here. Let's try it on hardware. Nope. I don't get it. Something is insanely wrong, yeah. Um, RDTSC. Can't optimize that out. Is it possible to compile without op optimization check? I've never tried it. I think it might work. Okay, we'll go to one with my RDTSC based RNG. Nope. Nope. I don't understand anything. <laughs> what the fuck? I, uh, <laughs> my brain. Ah. <sighs> Uh. Fuck. Okay, now... And then it starts, it's, no, that's not working. It's just a couple inputs. It looks like it's working, but it's not. Move EBX this, div RBX. Move byte pointer AL, that's the byte. Like, maybe I've just got some massive ass memory corruption. Some fucking huge memory corruption. Um, div RBX, and I write it out here. 
Is something getting cloned or copied under the hood? So let's, let's do some strong typing here. Do you print debug? I don't know what to debug, man. I can just print the input every time instead of just only on the six eights, but like I I don't even know what to print. Like in this case it does look like we're getting random bytes, I think. Hmm. Yeah. I don't think it's actually a compiler thing. I think it's something like so stupid that we're missing and we're trying to think like next level what it could be. Take the lower bit of your RNG. Yeah, it should be fine. I, I don't... This ran mod two here? I mean, that shouldn't matter. Make it mod three. I can. Same thing. Okay, so this is, I think like something, here's the RDTSC, here we load it into, this is storing it, RBX, RCX is the random length, which came from RDX, we bounds check it, and then we write into RBX plus RCX, so RBX is the pointer, so RSP plus 28, that's the pointer to the buffer, which we LEA into here. That's on our reserve, if we reserve that vector, change the size. I, I mean, it's it's likely that like my system allocator is like really fucked, possibly. Um, that's the only thing I could think of. Um, here we get, it's a Ravec reserve. Okay, here I call, I store racks. All right, LEA that, reserve. Am I like shadowing something? No. What if I what if I make a new vector every time? I don't know. Maybe I like corrupted my heap or some shit. That would make no sense. I feel like the kernel just fundamentally wouldn't work. Nope. Okay, start whittling shit down. Resize the input to five U8s. Corrupt it. OK. 
cat. It's just 68. Oh, I'm not feeding back. I think I know what's happening. It has, It is corrupting it. Something's causing me to not feed it back. I, yeah, I know what it is. When we corrupt only one bite, we only see it because we require that one of the bites is a specific bite. And for some reason, we don't have a, a, a situation arising where we actually corrupt a different bite and inherit from a previous input. And that way, um, basically, this is the random bite that we're corrupting here. Uh, and for some reason, we're not feeding back. We're not adding an input with 68, which means we're not seeing that. Uh, and that's why it looks random when we're not filtering on this, because it is. It's, it's randomly generating things, but we're basically pinning to the one that we generate, which then means that there's something wrong with the feedback. But let's let's print this then. Here. Let's see if we ever get a feedback. Feedback input. So from the feedback. We'll see if we ever see an FB input. Okay, so that basically means we never saved an input that went down that H path. coverage there we go so once it And then once we have an FB input, then we should start seeing random bytes, and we do. So I do think it's working, but I don't understand why it's struggling so hard to get that. I mean, I don't have perfect coverage, but I don't think that should be a huge issue. Let's try it on uh, physical hardware. I'm just missing that coverage event so frequently, I think. I think I'm getting slaughtered by that imperfect coverage. Maybe I fundamentally cannot get a... Maybe I can't get a preemption timer at that stage. So if I just turn on single step, right? There we get the 6.5, 6C. So this is what I expect. Um, and this is single step and so it's slow. So it just means that the preemption timer must be like really clipping to okay so i guess we can't use the preemption timer for coverage i mean that's the end right um and that's single stepping which is slow as hell right we can see that it's getting i guess it's still getting uh, 4300 a second um I guess I, I basically give it like a 1 in 4K that I, I preempt in that location. This is kind of worst case for the preemption timer stuff. I don't think this will get anywhere on real, on the VM. On real hardware, we should make progress. 6.5, 6C. And there it is, right? Complete. And we're getting good perf on real hardware with that. Yeah, the preemption timer is just... Yeah, let's, let's check out the perf difference. So I'm going to pause this VM. I'm going to take this off, put this on, and then I'm going to... 
uh, reset this hardware, and then we can see what perf we're getting. We're getting 552, and we hit, we instantly hit full coverage. Um, now if we do FFF, see what we get. I'm guessing we'll get more perf. Yeah. I think we just have the preemption timer too too high. We're just missing that coverage. We're hitting it all the time, but we're missing it. So this will probably have a... This will start making it through it. There it is. But on real hardware, I can do just and F for the preemption timer. No problem. So that's 780. Almost almost full speed. And then this is 568. What the fuck is the preemption timer then? And there it is instantly, right? But our perf is suffering because of it. Um, yeah, the preemption timer, I guess, is just, it's too sticky. I think it's too sticky. It's just sticking to things that I that I don't want. So let's see. That's like instantly getting everything. Yep. Um I don't even like if I just set the preemption timer to one, I don't even know like when that gets delivered. It's just fucking random. Let's try this. Okay, that's just stuck. And we are able to recover from that, so we'll just set it to a three. Oops. Uh, so preemption timer of three. Does that find everything instantly? Yes. And the perf is pretty good. 556. I don't know why 2 doesn't work, right? That's what we tried. We tried 2 and it didn't work. If we if we do 2, it doesn't work. Oh, it does work with 2. Uh, perf drops quite a bit. It didn't work with 1, I think. 1 was giving us problems. Yeah, one gets stuck. So two. Two is. What is that? Like, uh, if we don't have a preemption timer, what's our perf? Well, we'll set it to, like, a, bi a big number. So it still exists. Yeah, 800k, so it's like a 4x slowdown, having it on that. Let's just turn it to like 7. So, 800, 810k is basically native execution, max speed. And 600k, and that gets us, gets us everything instantly, doesn't it? No, is that stuck? And that can't sample it. I think the preemption timer has to be smaller than the block size of the thing that I'm sampling. So if the block size is... I, I think that's exactly what it is. Yeah, because that's instant, right? 
that gets me everything. And these blocks are one, two, three, four, five, six. I bet if I put this to six, this will work. But seven does not. I don't know why that is the case. Um, six maybe will put me on the jump boundary. So I could do five. Yeah, maybe it's time to switch to uh, EPT-based um, coverage. I mean, for a real program, this would be uh, typically acceptable because you don't have the... The gates to code aren't that short. It's just that preemption timer... All right, let's see if we can let's see if we can find some middle ground. Let's set this to rng.rand. So we're going to randomly pick one up to fff. But I'm also going to randomly set single step. There. That worked instantly. I think we're doing single stepping too frequently. If self.rng.rand and oxf is zero, one in 16 chance of setting single step. It's pretty good. What's our perf looking like? Pretty solid. It's not amazing. This is making progress, but not super fast. Yeah, and that's just, huh. Yeah, I guess that preemption timer is just not very predictable. Or it's it's too predictable, I think, is the issue. That preemption timer is... Um, yeah, I guess we're just going to have to use something different. That's fine. Can always do different coverage mechanisms. Still making it through there, right? It still makes the progress. So it's not that big of a deal. But yeah, we can set this to F on real hardware, but it just does it's not gonna work in the VM. But let's see, here we go. Zoop. And that's full. Is it because it's the same timer source as RDTSC? No, that shouldn't matter. I think there are just certain boundaries where I can't get a I can't get a exit of the VM, and I think it's kind of sticky to certain spots of the VM. And I think that's what's killing me. Obviously, I probably want a little bit more corruption here. Um, for this in zero dot dot worker dot rng dot rand mod three eh, up to six corruptions and then I can set on physical hardware I can set this to just a constant sum three and that seems to work great all right here we go instant like instantly finds all that coverage obviously I'm kind of bloating my corpus um because I'm saving all these dupes but it doesn't matter too much but yeah that's pretty much instantly getting full coverage um that should scale with cores as well in fact, we might actually be kind of okay when scaling with these cores. 
Here we go. Okay. Three million a second. I mean, three million a second is pretty fucking good. It works, which is the cool part, right? But I'll just need to find a different coverage mechanism. But this works. Um... Sixty-five input size. Yeah, now we'll do a random input size. And we'll see how long this takes. It instantly finds it, even with a random input size. It finds some like big ass inputs, but it instantly whittles down to that. Like that's the beauty of coverage, right? Coverage guided fuzzers, is it gets through uh, that permutation of that uh, two to the fortieth power complexity branch condition because it's five different uh, byte compares, and it gets through it instantly, right? Now we can change the way that we do coverage, and that's fine because typically I have multiple different ways. Um, when I'm fuzzing like uh, when I'm fuzzing something like this, it doesn't matter, right? Uh, or when I'm fuzzing something like this, it does matter. When I'm fuzzing a real target, it typically doesn't matter if your coverage is a little lossy. Um, but yeah, I'll, I'll probably eventually want to change up and do a couple different uh, coverage mechanisms. Let's see if I can go to 7 now. Actually, we'll go to RNG Rand 3F here. Okay, stop that, and here we go. It takes a little bit longer, but our perf is probably going to be significantly better. Yeah, our perf is... Eh, honestly, it's only like 25% better. How'd this work with a long-ass stir compare or a branch of magic dead beef? Uh, it, it just... It would have to brood it. So, with interrupt based sampling, I could actually find if I'm blocking on a comparison on uh, likely tainted data, and then I could break the comparison into four separate comparisons. That's kind of hard to do in a hypervisor, but it's doable. Uh, it's much easier in emulators. That's what I do in my emulator stuff. Typically, if, if you're running a fuzzer that's not in an emulator, you're, you're really not going, f like, you have to write a good fuzzer. You can't really rely on the byte flips. Like, byte flips and feedback don't get you places. What you want to do is you want to hard code your magic. You want to have that in dictionaries that you insert and inject into your input randomly. Um, I have tools that can solve these problems, right? on binary targets. You can also do it with compiler modifications if you can rebuild the code under test to split up all comparisons into byte comparisons one by one and kind of amplify those. Um, but I would actually use my emulator. If I, if I really wanted to like automatically solve stuff, I would use my emulator because it would just be much better than this. This is mainly for, like, you already know uh, what the underlying protocol is. You write a parser specifically for that. I mean, that's fuzzing in general, right? The whole, the, the whole concept of, like, generic mutation fuzzing stuff is just really pointless. <laughs> the amount of improvement that you can get is so minuscule uh, that it's typically just not worth it. It's just better to, like... Just write a fuzzer. Just spend a day and write a thousand line of code fuzzer that implements whatever protocol or whatever file format you're fuzzing. But... Yeah, this is pretty good. Yeah, I've got like a... I got like a 25% slowdown when I, when I switch to this. 
Obviously, it's going to be unusable in this VM. The VM just won't work. It'll get 10 fuzz cases. Yeah, just fucking nothing. But on hardware, it's fine. <laughs> All right, we got to dedupe these inputs. So I'm going to pause that, get rid of that server because it's trash. That'll go question marks. Yep, nice. Come on. Okay, so now what I want to do is I want to not save duplicate inputs. And that's relatively easy. Um, we're going to have... Oh, I need full cache. I can grab full cache quick. No problem. So we're going to make a... set of inputs. Um, okay, so what we'll do is we'll make an atomic hash table on the where we have an atomic hash table here. And we're gonna say, uh, this is gonna be um, inputs. This is an atomic hash table, which maps from a U128. Oh, honestly, I can just do the full vector. Like, fuck it, I don't care. And this is empty for six. Five five three six. Um, this is uh, input dedupe. A hash table of inputs. Eight seven eight. Fuzzing dedupe or er, input dedupe. Oops. Ht new inputs. Okay, and then we'll say if session dot inputs input dedupe dot inserts. Um, uh, I forget or inserts entry or inserts. It's about time that we probably make the coverage reporting stuff be uh, a closure, but that's fine. Uh, input. The hash will be zero for now, and then we'll put a box new empty tuple as the entry, and then if this is inserted, if we insert it into there, then we uniquely found an input. And we're just off a little bit here. A little pren. Oh, and then it's closure. Okay, here we go. We're technically not hashing it, so it's not great right now, but it's not too big of a deal. All right, here we go. So now we won't save duplicate inputs. Okay, we're saving duplicate inputs. Um, really? Input. Input dedupe. Uh, 
It's a vector of units. Oh, I'm stupid. It's working. The print's just not in the right spot. Woof. There we go. So now we have no duplicate entries. And that instantly... That instantly finds it. It's just it's just a joke, right? <laughs> Immediately we have that coverage. Um... <sighs> well, most people run these fuzzers inside VMs and containers. I don't care. I'm, it, I'm writing it for myself. Like, people can run on hardware. I can try and make uh, workarounds for VMs, but, I mean, you can't really make bleeding-edge software if you're running in legacy, you know hypervisors and stuff that really uh really struggle to handle what you're trying to do there's just not there's just there's really nothing you can do all right shoop That's looking good. Yeah, so we have I don't I don't have syncing between nodes, but that's fine. I'm not really fuzzing multiple nodes right now. But I do have coverage, I do have inputs. I should have input saving. I can add that pretty quickly. Uh, where I can send inputs up to the server, and then the server can delegate those inputs back and sync them down. Um, it's pretty close. Um, rather than creating a Docker image fuzzing, made a custom OS for fuzzing. Yeah, I mean, I wouldn't really ever fuzz inside of Docker. Um, that's just, I don't know, to me that's not super useful. Hmm. <clears throat> Yeah, this is looking pretty good. I think it's probably where I'm going to wrap it up. I still have to add, like, crash reporting to the server. Not really hard. Uh, but I'll add crash reporting to the server and then input syncing to the server and then input syncing from the server to the clients. And then at that point, it's basically complete. So I think I'm going to wrap it up here and get some sleep. I'm pretty happy with, with where this is at. does everything I need it to do. Um, so sweet. See y'all around another time. Thanks for tuning in.